Welcome into the Camistry Podcast, episode number 139. Damn, dude, 139. Well, yeah, a man. lot, man. That's a lot. Of, hey, I, I'll tell you this. You know, when you interview people all the time, you interview smart entrepreneurs, owners, GMs. They're just fucking smart. Like, you learn a lot, Andy, picking up on some of these cats and how they think. And I know it's kind of corny to say, but it, it's like reading a book or something that you're in control of, right? Or is that a bad analogy? Mm. I mean, like, you're the fucking book, and I'm, like, getting all the details out of you. Yeah, you know, you're so you're absorbing all Everything. the information. Yeah, you want to make yourself smarter. And you know what? Like, right, in, sure. convers- yeah. in conversations, Andy, and you're the same way as me. We walk into a room. We're social butterflies. I walk mm-hmm. in like, hi. Even people don't know me. I'm saying hi. And now you talk to people. It's always about hockey. Most of it's, you know, whatever. It, it goes all over the damn place. But man, even in like business and stuff, like after talking to all these guys, like it just kind of like you're, you just learned a lot. I'm like, how do you, oh yeah, that I remember Bill Foley telling me something or Lou said this or whatever. So like we're, on, we're conversation starters, Andy. Like I had to go to, you know, Kate Sting yesterday, you know, 50 people there. You're just talking about hockey left and right. And there's just so much new information that you don't realize that you have because you just learn so much from these fucking cats. Okay. I don't know. Am I 50 dirty? Pe- 50 people yeah. what, at Father's Day? Yeah, she has um it's in Kimswick, Missouri, which is f- beautiful. And they own a uh, like an, a house from the 1840s and because it's right by the Mississippi River. So this little mm-hmm. town, dude, was like, you know, the Mississippi River is like Highway 44 back in the day, dude. So they have all this cool shit. They have this old creepy cool-looking house, but it's scary. They own a Harley or a motorcycle shop that they sell motorcycles out there because that's where everybody rides and stuff. It's beautiful. They got a really cool setup, man. It is very historic. You know how much I love that shit, but fuck, I go, if you guys built a pool back here, you'd find like an Indian burial ground and shit, or who knows, you know, hey, you like never know. Rifles you or never something. know. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, I'm not going to lie. I know all about Kimswick. Awesome, I've been out there a couple times. Um, It's like a, Amish community, but it's not Amish. Is it? It's well, um, it's called. Uh, they've, they've got like little restaurants where like the the people who work there look like they're Amish. It's called the Blue Owl, and they all dress like they're in the eighteen hundreds and stuff like that. Now, oh, huh, I like that. This spot, if you ever want to get into the holidays, like do, do you get in the holiday spirit, Cam? Are you like a Christmas Dude, guy? I, Kate, and I are crazy about it. For Fourth of July, we're putting little American flags around every, like every ten feet around our house. I mean, getting fireworks, and then Halloween comes. Oh, we load it up. Christmas, it's and I'm such a neat nerd now that I get into it too. Because when you walk in your fucking house and it's decked out with Christmas or something, like it puts you in a good mood. So yeah, to answer your question. Yeah, well, that's when you want to go to Kimswick, and we're we're gonna go there with you. Probably do a little caroling. Yeah, I ain't right. going there. I, no, no, no. Here's what, like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that kind of stuff, dude. I want to just chill at my house. That's why you decorate your house so you don't <laughs> I, have to I go to Kimswick. That. I know that. I know that. Well, you went you to Kimswick yesterday, dude, so you can With go there family. at Christmas time. Family Halloween shit. too. Halloween, they get all like it's all like decked out. Yeah, again, they, I'm showing it that here at Halloween. We're gonna take side by sides, cruise up, take the take our nieces. I'm gonna show them like these cool houses way up in the woods, and one looks like a. Cat, it looks like Dracula's castle, but Kate doesn't want me to say that because I feel like I'm going to scare them. But I'm like, they're have like, you been there? Have yeah. you been in your house for Halloween yet? I don't think you have. Not have yet, you? dude. No, not yet. So I got to get a side by side, man. They're fucking awesome, Andy. Okay, I'm when you say side by, I'm I'm picturing. Hold on, because I'm picturing a motorcycle, probably a chopper. That's the type of motorcycle oh, I would have. Dude, hell I would have a chopper, and then you have the sidecar like next <laughs> like, to you, riding like a, down the highway, 1940s like 1940s like, German. German. No, you know what I'm saying? Like the sidecar on a motorcycle. Yeah, you ever yeah, been yeah, one of like those, the, like on the side? What the Nazis used back in Germany where they cruise around. And yeah, they have like that thing. Yeah, yeah. Is that what they used? No, it's, it's just Indiana Jones stuff. But no, Andy, you are 1 billion percent wrong again, as usual. That's a side by to... side. That's Andy, a side no, by it's side. not, fuck boy. Stop, stop it. It's not. No one's buying a motorcycle with a side by side on it and putting their wife in there. You're crazy. Maybe old school, older guys that are into motorcycles, which I'm not. I'm not at all. I'm turned off by them big time. Side by side's like a big Polaris, dude. It's like a big. It's a Polaris, like 
Uh, it looks like a four wheeler, but it's covered up, and you could put you could put uh, doors on it. You could put heating in there. You could put a badass system in it. You can just keep decking it out, decking it out, and it goes like fifty five miles an hour, depending on what kind of engine you, you you got in that bad boy. So instead of getting a golf cart, which you can't even use on the course here anyway, you get a side by side, and there's trails everywhere, and you fucking fly around. You could do this, do that. That's what I want. You know, okay. for your kids, if you got one, Andy, be awesome for like Halloween Dude, and cruise. Uh, true story. I I, I got a hook up for those things. And I've driven one uh, on a they're couple of awesome. occasions. And uh, no, they're very, very cool. I don't know what I would do with it. Like out at my, uh, Not, you, you on my resort. On my you resort don't have property. a trailer. And you don't have a trailer. You don't have a fucking a truck to, to haul that bad boy. You don't have anything for the one. I got but a Volvo, I dude. I put it on my Volvo. You look like a fucking jackass doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you ripped the, the hitch right off that bad boy. Hey, why, is, why is your arm all red? Oh, dude, I get bit by a goddamn spider. God damn it! Look at that! Oh my god! Ah, what kind of spider is that? Um, Dude, that's a, not, a that's pussy, not a see. A this is, this is why you act like you know what's going on. You act like you know, like you what? act like you're comfortable in the wilderness in the woods. That's not a spider, dude. That's not a spider. And what is it, Andy? Um, a like, mosquito. Like a mosquito. Mosquito. I think. I think. It's like well, a then a mosquito with fucking like <laughs> rabies fucking got me, dude. <laughs> the thing's blowing up like a balloon. I, what do you mean if I can do? Yeah, it looks it's nasty, horrible. dude. Yeah, you might have to wear good. some long sleeves. Yeah, it doesn't matter. My arms are jacked anyway. It kind of blends in. But the hey, point put is, some, uh, put some medication on that, Cam. Put a little uh, cotton uh, cotton swab and get a little peroxide or something like that. You better clean that shit up, dude. I'm you. telling you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else I should do with it? What do you do with your spider bites? Get on with yourself. Well, I, mean, I don't think. Like Did two you weeks hear now. that storm last night, by the way? Yeah, dude. It was awesome. What do you think of storms? Do you get worked up? Like, do you get scared? Does it wake you up? It was no, crazy. I, it. I, I hadn't heard that kind of storm in a long time. I can sleep right through it. My wife wakes me up, dude. She wakes up to anything. So she's the one that wakes me up. If it wasn't for her, I would sleep right through it. But it was crazy last night. I hadn't heard a storm like that in a long time. It was just headwinds. There wasn't anything, any rotation on it. That's what scares don't, me, don't, too. Don't turn into a meteorologist. No, you no, don't no, know no, what no. kind of headwinds. Uh, this was a no, serious was a straight, storm. No, 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 no. Motherfucker, it was straight headwinds. Otherwise, you'd be hearing the sirens left and right. There was no spin on it. There's no rotation. It was just straight fucking headwinds, which is still creepy. You'll knock a tree down on your fucking house. You know, especially my house gets rocked because I got a lot of plain behind me and it builds up over the hills and it rocks my house. But if there's rotation, I ain't fucking around and I'm listening for that siren, dude. And I hate when people are fucking naive about tornadoes out here. Like, yeah, who cares? Like, they're fucking around, dude. Like, they'll build up in two seconds, especially at night. Especially at night. That's when they get you at night. So there's no rotation on it. So I'm just like fucking headwind lightning. I don't care. It's awesome. It's beautiful. Yeah, how do you I, know if there's rotation or not? Like you're in bed. They would go crazy. The weather people would go crazy, dude. They'd go crazy and it'd pop up tornado warnings, tornado warnings. You would know. It, 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 unless you're aloof to everything, which sometimes you are, you would know. <laughs> you watch TV. You're probably watching fucking WNBA last night or I look at the weather channel, dude. Hey, you think I would know? You think I would know? No, you wouldn't. Dude, I've got I'd have to text Ty. I'd be like, Ty, get in the basement and tell your daddy. Be the man I've of the got, house, Ty. I've got Adirondack chairs literally flying 30 feet above ground through the backyard, through my resort property, dude. Like, I'm seeing it. Your property okay. looked really good yesterday. Your wife put a a picture of Ty hitting the ball. He had a good swing, dude. I know this is – our fans probably don't want to go too into detail, but I, I have to pump you up. Your, your backyard looked – really cool if i'm a kid what? i'm running around what in the backyard what video did she put up he put up a, a video of ty hitting the ball you're pitching the tie and he's swinging them hips baby he actually well, turned she, on it she better had some good ones when he actually made some he contact hit, he, he made contact on it but yeah. i watch these kids dude and i talked to all my buddies. everybody has kids with me and that's and it's fine. And I, I, I live vicariously through their kids at times because I go over there and I'm always, you know, how I am with them. They, they love it. I'm like fucking a mixture between Santa Claus and like uh, Barney or something. I don't fucking know. But I always go over there and I kind of always just kind of teach them different things, man. Some of these kids are fucking unbelievable athletes. And then some of them, it's like half and half, Andy. It's mm -hmm. so weird. I half know. and half. And the other ones are like, hi, doop -a -doop -a -doop -a, a butterfly. No, no, hit the ball. Look, a butterfly. And like they're picking the, the the grass and stuff when they're like you know I, I don't know it's 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 so weird they're it's half and half and some of these kids get up to like my buddy Jason's son who's just a shit kicking handsome kid he goes up there and fucking just 
bashes of, I'm like, damn, like he could, I don't like, was I a good athlete like that when I was that young? Probably, uh, probably not. Probably not. Probably, I mean, probably not. I mean, yeah, it dominated everything, but yeah, I, but I'm like, damn, he's got, he's got some fucking rhythm to him. So I, I don't know. But yeah. then other kids are like, yeah. It's weird. No, I know. No, Ty's got like uh no, he's good at baseball. He's he loves it. playing baseball. He can hit it. He can hit it. It's I didn't for sign him. him up for it this year. Like, you know, he just turned five. Yeah. I figure like next summer is when we'll start playing some baseball. Because I think it's important, man. He's got to play some other sports. You got to play some. You can't just do one sport. Man, Andy, I, I, if I was in control of your family, which I kind of am, and I probably could be, <laughs> I'd get hit. I'd get him in the motherfucking baseball. I told you I'd get him in the wrestling at a young age. I'm just telling you, man. His the, the 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 confidence he'll get, like his neck will get big, like he'll have, like he'll look the complete opposite of you, which you want. You want his frame to look exactly how yours doesn't look, right? Like, <laughs> does that make sense? Like, he okay. did wrestling. I'm just telling you, I'd get him into that, and then I'd get him in a track and stuff like that. So he's always running, running and jumping, and running and jumping and stopping and running. I don't know. Soccer, hundred percent, dude. Go after the fucking ball. Like I gotta tell Chloe, go after that goddamn ball. Run it. No matter what, who cares about, go after it. You know that I should be a motivational speaker to children, and I could I could not cuss, and I know how to do that. But I just I just know, man. Like at that age, you just you got to run. You got to find your athletic ability. You got to build your confidence up. It's everything, dude. Yeah, you it's everything you that. didn't do. It's everything you didn't do. Some people get a little overconfident at a young age. Like, hey, yes, they do. It's a process. Yes, they like do. make sure that they maintain that confidence and that ability when they're 10, 15, 16, 17. Don't think just because they have it at four that it's an automatic that they're going to have it at 12 hey, because it's 100%, not. 100%, homie. And you chirped me. Dude, we dominated. My cousin Derek dominated everything we played, like soccer, all that. We were, always, we were just hitting it. Everybody, you know, again, half and half. Like you, we were the – but – your parents and your your own self, your own confidence could reach a new level where it's going to hurt you. You need to get smacked in the face one time. And there's always times that happened to me throughout my whole fucking life, dude. I'm the fucking best. And all of a sudden that big boy puts you on your ass like, oh, OK, regroup, regroup. And my dad was always good at balancing that with me. Like, you're you're the toughest. Oh, cool. you, you got pumped. You got why'd you let that happen? You got, you know, and you're like, oh, God. Mm. But some of these parents are you're the best. <laughs> my son's the best. I know when I talk to a parent, Andy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And the first thing, talk, oh, he's the best. He's the, now nah, he doesn't need, nah, I'm like, get the fuck out of my face. Get out on with yourself. Go to all the other ex accident. Ask Maddie Lash off to fucking all those guys where their kids are dominant. He's good, but he, he's got to get, he's got a piano mm -hmm. on his back. Like what, what, mm -hmm. what uh, Walt would say about Matthew, or a piano on his back. Like he scored seven goals in that fucking game. Piano on his back. You know, that's the balance. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. You get my no, I'm, I'm with you. you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Somebody sent me a text yesterday of like a Facebook post of their buddy showing their kid playing hockey and say and his what he wrote was the coach came up to me asking, does your kid always skate circles around all the other kids? And I'm like, dude, you, you, can't, you can't write that on Facebook. You shouldn't write that. If the coach really came up to you and said that. I don't know if that's for you to share with the rest of the community, especially I when. Other kids play on your daughter's team okay. or whatever. Okay. okay? I see that you know part what I'm saying? Andy. And they're seeing that and they're like, it comes across a little bit too cocky. Man, okay. I get what you're saying. If my dad was ever on the internet, thank Christ he's never even thought of it or <laughs> ever wanted to. My dad would brag about me to everyone, Andy, mm -hmm. to a point where it's just like, okay, dad, I'm not, I would think that. And I, you know how I love getting pumped up. And I'm like, okay. And then my mom would be like, before we went to even events when we were younger, my, my mom would even tell him, not, not all about, you know, because he's just so excited and we want to show off and pump up. So, like, when you're a parent and you get that one, fucking, wait, wait. When some when some coach goes to Todd, goes to you and says, and I know you're in a different category because you've seen this firsthand throughout the years. But if he's like, Ty is fucking awesome. And I hear it. You'd be like, you would want to share that so goddamn fast, Andy. But you know not to do it. But some oh, of these parents never. are like, they, they, it's all about their kids. And, you know, they send pictures of 50 pictures of their kids. You're like, good God. So if a coach said that to your, to your, your daddy and you're just like, fuck yeah, I'm going to tweet that or post it. Like, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. like you get my drift a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you, man.
It's crazy. It's like a whole different world because you want to do it. You know, listen, I, know. I I'm with Ty all the time, you know, on the ice, you know, we were on the ice yesterday for Father's Day, whatever. You want to post pictures and videos all the time, but you just know you just can't. I, I don't want to become that guy. I'm no, trying not to become that guy. Well, you need to monetize your shit too. And it can't just be all about your shit. It needs to be a mixture of different stuff, man. Like even like, and, and, and social media is so goofy anyway, but for us, like we need to get out there. Like people want to see what we're doing. Like it, it is what it is. Like we have a big fan base and well, mostly me, but they want to see our personal life. And like, well, you, you know what? what? It's funny, Tim. It's funny you say that because somebody else was chirping me the other day who, you know, who he is, whatever. And you know, about I posted a video of Ty skating and whatever. And I'm like, you know what, man? It's just, it's different. Okay. Like you can post it like whatever of your own kid. I mean, I am not saying everyone wants to see my own kid skating, whatever, but you know what? It's kind of part of the job. You got to be active on social media. You got to keep yourself out there whatever, man. It's just like, you know, don't overdo it with shit. It's just part of it. Yeah. Don't, don't flood overdo it. one thing. Like, uh, like Kate and I are fucking chilling. Like the other night I'm like, like just send a little picture. We had all the lights out. Storm was coming in. Fucking lit candles. But Islanders are playing. Doggies are laying on me. And Kate just filmed a little thing. Like the storm's coming. Like people just want to see what you got going and shit. But it's got to be kind of a different thing going. You know, you can't flood it in one uh, one aspect, one way or the other. But most people do, Andy. Like they okay. fucking slam Listen, their face with your kids. Like bah, bah, bah. I call I call Cam today this morning before we do this. I said, yo, are you going to be at the radio station today? I want to bring you something over. I want to bring you a steak that I made last night, dude. And you don't even want the steak. I made you a steak. I wanted you to try my steak. I did eight minutes on each side, whatever. Flip that bad boy. I was going to bring it to you, dude, and you don't even want it. This is how stupid you are. You cook a fucking steak. Obviously, you don't eat it. So you save it for me for the next day. Would you put it in your fridge? And I'm going to eat your day-old steak. And you're like, what is it? Is it a fat? T- is it Kobe beef wagyu? Did you did you massage the cow yourself? Even then, I'd be like, go fuck yourself. Give me the goddamn steak before you fucking cook it. I want to cook my own steak, or invite me over for dinner and then cook the steak and then fucking give it to me when it's hot. Don't cook it and be like, oh yay, look at what I'm doing, and then put it in the fridge and be like, well, give us a cam in a studio tomorrow. And by the way, I ain't leaving my house today. I'm doing my radio show from my fucking basement. Let me veer on to something real quick before we get into hockey. You're going on vacation next week. Yeah. You're, you're going to Lake Tahoe. And I chirped yeah. you about, I didn't understand what you're talking about with the boat thing. So let me, let me. Yeah. Lake yeah. Tahoe ain't no joke. It's expensive, dude. Listen, it's expensive for the Lake Tahoe boats. ain't no joke. Now, I'm not saying it's overpopulated like Lake of Ozarks where you're going to get, you have dipshit 13 year old girls pulling in front of you on their fucking jet ski and shit or whatever. But it's classy and it's, it, it might get a little rough out there. And I didn't know if you, you said you're going to get a captain of a boat. And I'm like, if you're going to drive a pontoon, do that yourself, Andy. You could, it's easy as fuck. You bang it up a little bit on a dock. It ain't going to be a big deal. Just put the bumpers out before you go. I'll fucking, but if you want to do a big dog style, you have to get a fucking 40, 50 foot, rent that bad boy out like a big sea ray and then hire a captain, older guy who's cool, who chills. And then oh, you yeah. guys could chill the whole time. So there's a big difference. But if you That's get a captain, do, yeah. well, hold on. But if you get a captain for a goddamn pontoon boat, you're an mm-hmm. idiot. You do that yourself. It's the easiest thing. They're supposed to get kind of beat up a little bit, dude. Fuck those. They fucking have a big thing on it. Just put your bumpers out. You'll be fine. Don't drive with your bumpers. You'll get pulled over. But mm-hmm. that lake, dude, I'd be classy. I'd, I'd do it big dog style. 250 an hour, you say, with a captain on a big boat. That's yeah. worth it. Is it five hours? Yes, five hours. Lake, uh, three hours then. Go three hours and show the lake because five hours might be long with the kiddos, but with us, dude, you'd want to be out there all day going. What if I bumper. do like a uh, charter? You know, with like a like thirty, like fifty other people on there. You know, and that's, the guy is like talking no, in the microphone, no, 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 being no, no, like, no. "If you Andy. look to your right, this house has been here since 1925. Your kids are going to be like, "What the fuck are we doing?" <laughs> Take your goddamn captain, spend the money, and go find a cool cove and jump in with the kids and st- play mm-hmm. music. He'll it's do a anything deep lake. for you. Very deep lake. Whoa, hell Very dude, deep. That's a fucking crater pride that happened happen in there. All the mountain, all the water. It's, you could drink that goddamn water pride, man. I wouldn't do it. But it's all cold. It's going to be cold as shit. The, the, it's all mountain water. Oh, or mountain yeah. It's cold. Yet. It'll be cold. Who It'll cares? Cold. It's going to be awesome, dude. That's a good place to go. Don't fuck it up by do like just do it right. And if you got to spend the money, don't be goddamn cheap. 
You got the kids. Let them explore this beauty and take pictures of that, dude. That's going to. fucking oh, awesome. I'm bring my phone. My wife probably won't let me bring my phone on the boat. She'll think I'm going to drop it in the water. Dude, always bring your phone. You're you're on the water, homie. You need to have somebody that has a phone or something. I know that, but I always have your phone. You're going to be in a big sea ray. You ain't going to fall out. You're not a canoe. Even on a hey, canoe, you, you got to bring your phone. Hey, you know who's always posting like unbelievable like videos on on some cool ass boats? Who is Ron Duguay? You follow him on, I on saw Instagram? Him, all of it. I saw all of it. Yeah, he has some cool shit going. I see him. Always, is that his family? Dude. dude, they all look good. Yeah, that's good his daughter. God. I think <laughs> she's really cute, man. Good. She's very. How could cute. she not be? His sons are cute, for fuck's sakes. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, dude. Um, just so you know, I want to let everybody know. Um, people, a lot of people are interested in this, Cam. What? Because they're interested in what I'm doing. And, and you know. Are you breaking more... like a, a fucking trade deal or something? Because that's what they're interested in. Oh, I did break the other day though about this uh, Rick Taka situation in Seattle. You know, yeah, people I've people don't like him. to give people don't like to give credit and stuff like that. But it's all good, man. Oh, Doesn't man. matter. Uh, all- he has, listen, he hasn't even been offered the job yet, as of when I tweeted that out. So we'll see what happens. But you know, whenever they bring you in for a tour of the city and the in the complex, and you're going to sit down and meet the CEOs, yeah. and like normally it's a good sign. You know, Dude, how would you not want Rick Tockett in that organization? Right? I know, fucking back. Like, I know, have I know. the fucking shit pecker come in and be like, I'm the fucking man. Seattle Kraken. That is the coolest goddamn name. Their, Dude, fucking their logo, their colors are sick. God damn. They know how. Let me ask now, you Seattle's kind of fucked up. Don't get me wrong. They got some yeah. fucked up. Not as bad as Portland. Okay. We all know what the fuck I'm talking about. Seattle's but amazing. Dude. Seattle's a badass town. Expensive as shit. Expensive, Expensive as, as shit. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. A lot of hippies and Very. shit, which is cool. But yeah, but other- it's like it's not not just hippies though. Like there's yeah, environmentalists. Andy, but there's a lot of on. there's a lot of techies though. Too, there's man. money tech, there, Be- money tech money. Big there. time money. You could that's why you could get a job out there easily. But there's some fucking there's some fucking like you know like kind of like there a lot of like homeless people there too because they all yeah. oh, you know yeah. you know it's kind of a fucking turn off. But you have that beautiful mountain in the background. Seattle's so awesome, dude, and the. I'd love to be a part of that. Do you think TJ Oshie is going to get in the uh, expansion draft and be the captain of that mouth? I don't know. Hey. Apparently he said like he wasn't interested or something like that. So well, I don't it know ain't about you, <laughs> but let me, yeah. Cause I never know like, you know, a veteran player. I, I, I talked to a guy the other day. Um, he would have zero interest in going to Seattle. I'm like, really? I mean, cause they think that expansion team, the team's not going to be as competitive or whatever. I mean, all you gotta do is look at Vegas. I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to be able to do what Vegas did. And they probably won't be. I mean, that's like a once in a lifetime situation where like Vegas comes into the league and they're just dominant right off. I don't the bat. give a shit if they do, Andy. I want yeah. them well, no, to be either. successful. But like, I don't know why you wouldn't be interested in like that experience of playing for an expansion team in a city like that. And like, you're going to have, there. and you're going to have a experienced coach, man. You're going to get that same incredible NHL experience, man. The fans are going to get behind you. They got a great logo, great color God. concept too, man. I, I I'm I'm into the Kraken. Dude, I'm into the NHL right now. Mm-hmm. I, okay, let me let me explain something to all y'all. Oh, Again, I didn't I, tell people real quick, what? Kim. What? The people who wanted to know what you, you know more about me than you about what I'm doing today. I just yeah, what, what what what? I'm golfing today. I'm oh, going golfing geez. first time in like two years. They're all that texting I'm going me right golfing. now, Andy. They're all fucking <laughs> pissed at me right oh, now. Oh, what are Every they saying? Oh, you we, we need you. Where you at? We can you uh, I know, motherfucker I know. can't take off another goddamn day. I'm taking tomorrow off of fucking work for a fucking golf tournament. We should have had our goddamn show out there anyway. I can't just be like, nope, taking it off. Like I gotta do shit. I can't throw this on my fucking radio partner, dudes. God damn, they're annoying. Well, we should have we should have done the show out there. Yeah, I know, but we they have to set that show up. Out there. Andy, I they know. gotta set if they want they set the goddamn you know what I have to do. You know exactly yeah. what's going on. They yeah. see this every other fucking week. Set yeah. it up. Fuck, no, they now come, I feel they, like a fucking they, asshole. They got to come to you and say, like a month ago, hey, how about we do the, can you bring the show out to Can you bring the, the show game? out there? We know you got, you're on for 12 to 2 every fucking day. Can you bring the show out there? I'd be like, goddamn right. We'll entertain everybody. I'll talk to everybody. So I did say, though, auction me and Patty off for a dinner at a restaurant. Does Patty so know? Contrib- Probably not. <laughs> hey, Patty's gonna pay for it. You know you won't. Well, hey, Patty already called. He already Wait. called you cheap. He, that motherfucker. 
<laughs> I was fucking partying with all your fucking buddies, Patty, in fucking limos, scraping the ground because we have so many chicks in there, spinning fucking coin while you're still fucking hanging out in fucking middle school, figuring out your bullshit. No, you weren't even in middle school. You're older, and you couldn't figure out how to make the NHL yet while I'm throwing coin around. So shut the fuck up, okay? I took care of business for a long time. Get on with yourself. Look, You don't look at my bank account statements? Tell me if I didn't party. Hey, Lord. It was my limo, too. It wasn't your limo from... Uh, <laughs> I got <laughs> two limo. of them that night. I know. Dude, I, I, I spent so much fucking money, dude. There's cheap well, people. There's, no, it's not good. But there's don't call me cheap. There's so many cheap people out there who I despise. I hate if you're cheap, especially if you have a lot of money and you just are so fucking frugal to where you make everybody else miserable around you. It's like, why have money then? So what are you saving it for? Your great, like your children who don't even like you because you're so fucking cheap. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, and, enjoy yourself. And then, especially if you brag about how much money you have, the fuck out of here. Cam, the other day. What? So my buddy opens up this new uh, this new store here in town. I, I knew I needed to support him. He wants to meet you. I'm going to set up a meeting. We may, we may actually do some business with this guy. He's cool as shit. He's in tight with like all the like NHL players everywhere, like all over the league. Like he flies out to Vegas, flies out to different cities, whatever. He's Ooh. just like my boy Ryan. So he opens up the shoe store, dude. And I've done radio shows out of the spot for a long time. Me and Biz Nasty did a Q&A with him during the All-Star uh, weekend. Yeah, remember? I remember that. Yeah, yeah where he yeah, drove, so you drove, I had to pick him up. I had to pick his ass up. <laughs> he was like staying in the middle of the hood, too. I'm like, what? I mean, where what? are we? He was so nervous where was in the at? car. Where was he like, at? Way downtown, but like Why? not. Oh. I don't know. Boy. Well, because that's Who where the. That I don't know. Well, that's where the, the All-Star game was obviously downtown at the Enterprise yeah. Center. So like, he, he didn't stay too far from there. Hey, my business. Uh, next time you come in town, like let me like set you up with like, St. Louis is being uh, no, 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 it's <laughs> <not>. hotel. <laughs> but we had so much fun, dude. He's a fucking natural. He's awesome. But but um yeah, come Ryan, on. And Ryan on. hooked it up, dude. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan hooked it up, man. So anyway, so I go out to a store well, the other what? Night. with a shoe? Did he give you shoes? No, he has like he's like a um memorabilia guy. And he signs all these athletes, baseball, NFL, NHL players, to exclusive deals. Yeah, I'm a- pays them thousands and thousands of dollars, dude. They sign a bunch of shit, and then he does whatever he does with them, you know. But but he's cool. Like guys like hanging out with them. Like guys like O'Reilly, Parego, like yeah, they're tight with him. Shen, all these guys, man. Dougie Armstrong oh, yeah. went out there too. Didn't he? Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, he I did. I hooked that up. Big Dougie, Al, McK- Al McKinnis, the Kachuk boys, all those guys. But hey, then- when you get the GMs to go out there, that means yeah. like there's if you're they're, they're doing pretty good. But Nathan McKinnon brought him out. Like, I mean, he's like to Colorado to do some stuff, whatever. He did some stuff out there in Vegas with a bunch of the guys, too. So he's cool as shit. Anyway, so we're going to do some stuff with him. But regardless, he opened up a store called the Soul Cave. And it's like a shoe store for like expensive like shoes that I really don't wear, like expensive like Nikes and like Jordans and stuff like that, dude. So I wanted to support. What he had going on, I went out there. I couldn't be cheap and just like walk out and like not buy a pair of shoes, dude. So I got a pair of shoes, and he's like, "You can pull these off, man." I'm like, right, "I hope so." Well, why wouldn't he give them to you for free though? You get a buy. You went out there, hooked him up, and then he, he didn't give you he a hooked, free. Sh- he hooked me up. He hooked me up. So, but I, so you, is yeah. this why you're talking about him on the podcast? So he hooks you up with fucking Jordans. So we just took three minutes out of this for you to talk about a fucking shoe salesman that hooked you up with probably like forty percent off. And now you got to talk about on our fucking podcast with people from Saskatchewan and shit. Is that okay. what you just did? Can I pull these off? Can I wear these Jordans? Let me around, see what they dude? look like. I show. I put them on my Instagram. Did you saw them? Yeah, your, your Instagram doesn't pop up on my shit because it's just not yeah, it cool does. enough. Yeah, I only no, got cool pop, motherfuckers. It, 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 I, I skim right through it whenever you do shit, unless you're like uh, cooking something I can make fun of you about. But when you're showing mm. me Nike, shit, I'm like, I don't give a fuck, dude. And no, you tops. are gonna look goofy as shit on those, dude. Look, High look tops. At those. No, they're low tops. I got the low tops. Are they all red they're, and shit? Yeah, they're like red and black. You're gonna look like that guy that uh, that got his ass kicked at the fucking Suns game. <laughs> That's what you're four gonna, and he Suns, has dude. A, Suns and four. That guy's like like a renowned like hero, like local hero there in no, no, Arizona. No, I'm talking they about the dude that got his ass kicked. I'm not, oh. I'm not, he was on. He he just got interviewed too. That fucking weirdo. Punk. Did he? Look at his stupid ass. His his pants were all the way down to his kneecaps when he's doing this interview. 
That motherfucker is a virgin. I'll tell you that right now. No <laughs> where's hot the inter- fucking Where's broad. the interview? Where's no the hot interview? broad is going to look at that fuck and be like, I like you. I want to like make love to you. Nobody. You're a fucking virgin, you weirdo. Cam, where's Good. the interview? Where's the it's interview? It's on all over social media, homie. Look it up on Twitter. This fucking that dude weirdo. who got beat up. His pants are literally down to his ankles. And, and he's sitting there and he's like, I didn't even get hit that bit. I didn't even get hit. He's got that fucking Guido oh, haircut. No. Jerk, like, you know, and he's just like, those are the kind of guys that like I want to smack yeah. in the face. Well, so anyway, so I'll be wearing my Jordans around, dude. They're like wrapped up in like, like they're sealed. Like, I don't even know if I should open them. This is like a collector's item, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'd say you'd keep them closed and throw them in the fucking trash because you're going to look like a goofball <laughs> wearing those stupid no, ass I things. Won't. Did they're you look too at expensive. Them? Did you look no, at man. I, I, look I, look yeah, at him. I, I mean, and then let damn. me know. I mean, listen, this is like the difference. I, 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 we're we're and live. I. We're looking live, right? I'm not looking at your stupid Instagram account. I can pull this shit off, dude. You can't. I don't. I don't think you can. Okay. I, 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 almost, I, got, I almost got you a pair. I almost got you. I don't know pair. if I want to. Okay. I wear like A6, dude. I'm such a fucking loser. Oh no. Oh. A6 are that they're comfortable though. They're, they're, those yeah, are good but they're shoes. cheap. Do you, like I buy you my plan clothes. on running. Do you plan on running? I run three miles a day now, homie. Do you? I do. Yep. So the dogs. And then Kate's like, we can't run the dogs that much because they're puppies, and like it's, it'll stunt their growth. And I'm like, fuck. So then I got my rollerblades out, and now I'm gonna do the old sexy thing I used to do back in the day to get all the hot to uh, <laughs> get old women in this uh, neighborhood. They're going to go crazy. I used to do it, Andy. R- cruise around the neighborhood, no shirt on, stick handle around, looking jacked. But now I'm kind of fat, so I got to like lose a bunch of weight before I get back into that, very confident, because the women are going to go crazy. They go crazy over these little babies. These two puppies attract more vagina than anything else in the world. I want to fucking rent them out. I want to run him out to dipshits like that dipshit that got his ass kicked. He might get he might get laid if he's got one of my puppies next to him. Hey, but then he's gonna act like an asshole. Is it not the worst? First off, my wife she's like paparazzi, dude. Like she's taking pictures of me when I don't even know. Like my Andy, you were looking right at her, dude. No, there's but 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 there's lots of different things. She's taking videos, pictures. I don't even know when she's taking it, and I'm looking. I feel like I'm aging right now, Cam. Like she's, you she's do look in, like shit. Yeah, do I? You're, Am you're, I aging? How about you put some can lights in that goddamn office of yours, dude? You see how bright it is in my fucking office here? Dude? I got can lights out the wazoo. I didn't even put the other light this on behind is, you. Look at it. When we built this house, that's one of the regrets I have. Can Isn't lights are... Listen, I have can I lights throughout the entire house, except my office, dude. Because, that's kind of goofy. Know, it's my office, whatever. Andy, like a light, light fixture. I got can I wish, lights. I w- hold on. I wish I would have done... Um, I wish I would have done can lights in here, but dude, when you build a house, when you get to the electrical oh, and you start doing God. the lighting cam, oh, it's so expensive, dude. Like every can light adds up. Like you can't just do, you got to have like 12 here, eight here. You got the whole lucky, basement is can lights. You got lucky. So I didn't do it in my office and I should have. Well, you should have. Here's, I got can lights in my fucking kitty litter room. <laughs> That's what I got. <laughs> you got lucky, homie. Cause building the house right now. Oh, I know. fucking fuck that, dude. We both we both did the right thing at the right time. I didn't want to build. I was thinking about building a house here in St. Albans. It would have cost mm-hmm. me out the fuck. So now I just take our time and build this fucking thing up. It's perfect. It's exactly what we want. But you would have. It would have cost you so much more money if you would have fucking built that house like a year ago. Oh yeah. If you're in the middle look. of that. Oh. But listen, I I got under contract with my house, dude. Like when I actually put the money down and said, hey, we're going to, we bought the lot and whatever. In December of 2018, it was like right around Christmas time, dude. And we didn't move in until November of 2020. I, dude, I remember doing <laughs> it. Took a here, long here, fucking, time. You were sitting in a hotel with the dogs and three kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. I almost invited you out to the house or at least Ty or the wife just to spend a night. And then you, so you just only had two kids. It's probably just Ty and the wife I was going to bring out to the house. But it's all good. Just to kind of help you out a little bit. <laughs> hey, but so my wife, she gave me this collagen. You know what that is? It's like a new phenomenon, dude. It makes your hair grow. It makes your Send skin. It to me now. Send it to me now. Dude, so everybody's doing this thing. So she does it, whatever. And like a lot of women do it, but a lot of men do too. This collagen. I don't know exactly what, what it does. It? 
I just had my first dosage yesterday. Would you eat you it or something? It. You just drink it. Fucking I don't know. I give it like to me. It's going to make my skin and my hair grow back. Like my, my hair is going to oh, grow a little longer Andy, and my skin's going to look off. younger. <laughs> I, I know. I can't even Dude. go on TV. I look fucking hey, idiot. You and Kate should get some of this college. Kate's got the thickest hair in the fucking league. No, she but got I mean, beautiful princess hair. It'll make her like hands all the. It, it does crazy she's, stuff. You should see. You should see hands. these before and afters. Get I some, need dude. it. I'm gonna hook you up with some collagen. I need it. My my hand. I'm rough. I'm like I'm like God. I I'm, I'm gross. I got a bald spot. I'm overweight. I, I I need I need beauty. I'm hurting our product because yeah, of my ugliness. Are. Yeah, the brand. The brand as a whole. God, isn't that, that the worst? Hair grow? What? Isn't that the, somebody takes a picture of you and they post it, and you're like, oh, oh God. Travis did that to me the other day in a <laughs> fucking golf tournament, that motherfucker, right in my bald spot. And oh, somebody yeah. was like giving me a massage, which it looked really weird. Oh, no, they were putting, I had some kid put a <laughs> baby oil on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was like it was, it was, it was, sunscreen. Uh, sunscreen all over my oh, neck and God. stuff. Some and my bald spot was hanging out, and like, that's a no no. So anybody films me, and we do have to do it all the time for radio. I mean, I, I'm taking a I just don't get my fucking bald spot, okay? Hey. Number one. And then he takes a picture of my fucking bald spot on Snapchat, puts that up while I'm getting massaged by redheaded fucking Patrick Kelly. So oh, it looks he, really bizarre. And he posts Pat, that. I'm like, cool. He put the sunscreen on you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? What a job. That, well, I have people working for me when I do these things, and I had one guy lather me down <laughs> i'm not gonna do it because then my oh, hands my are God. slick rick and then i'm really gonna slice listen i get females to put sunscreen on me cam okay there in weren't any around instead. there weren't any no you don't there weren't any around <laughs> <laughs> they're just he was the next thing okay it's like oh hey, my god ahead, patrick lather me i don't give a fuck i'd rather can a man i, do can it I ask, me. let me ask you this though real quick because like the, the, this hockey thing with the referees, everybody's going crazy. It's oh, interesting it. when you don't have like a dog in the fight. Mm -hmm. I would much rather watch guys absolutely kill each other and no penalties 100%. than have the game stopped every two and a half minutes to call a penalty. Why, why is everybody so worked up? Here's the rebuttal. Here's the rebuttal. All the new the new age kids. I, I see this so much with my interns and shit, Andy. You know exactly what I'm talking about. They don't even know the 90s hockey. They just know – what's going on now and they don't not used to the, the crazy hardcore stuff because they just weren't there for them so now they, they they want everything called they don't want to be they 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 want power plays and stuff like that i think a lot, a lot of people do like special teams and seeing that kind of stuff where i'm I, I, I i'm gonna say this on the show today i'm gonna be like what would you rather see and people are gonna be like how would you just call how it is call the right. rules well it doesn't right. work that way it doesn't work that way it never can work that way i'm sorry because if you want to tap everybody two seconds, there was, you could have called 50 penalties, 25 apiece. If you called it the way you're supposed to call it, 50. Do you want that? We'll just call it the way? That's not the question, though. What would you rather have? Because the, the, the refs are like, either we do it or we don't, okay? They're in a weird dilemma. Think about it. Because mm -hmm. if you called it the way it's supposed to, 50 fuck penalties. So don't say that. Don't say it doesn't work that way. So these refs, and I love that. Now, there's some they could have called, and you could even end up whatever the hell you want to do because that's how it goes. But you certainly, certainly rather have them dictate the game, sway the game one way there without calling something than call some fuckboy shit, and all of a sudden they get a five on three and it, they score two goals or whatever the case is, and it ruins the game. I, I don't know anybody that's been in the game a little bit that's kind of hardcore hockey guy. They're like, no, no, no. I'd rather see them kill each other and fucking go to and have – crazy stuff going on then call just stoppage after it's a it's bad for the fucking product if you do that you get you get all these guys bitching on that doesn't sway anything like it just doesn't matter but if you don't if you call shit andy it just oh god it's well a, i don't know what people game. want what you want the game to last like listen this is playoff hockey you can't celebrate the fact that playoff hockey is way more intense. It's faster. There's harder hitting. Like everything we love about the playoffs, and then complain that you want it called and officiated the same way as the regular season. Like the playoffs isn't the same as the regular season. Well, they want but it's it a lot. It's a lot of former. Play. It's a lot of former hockey people who are saying just call the game the way it is. If it's a penalty, it's a penalty. Listen, here's the way I look at it. I don't mind an extra punch in the face. I really don't. I mean, that, that's part of 
Don't the injury that yeah. comes with the playoffs. That's why it's like the uh, a battle of the of the separates the sport, man. It, it is. It's like a, a battle of the well, what's the word like a battle of the fittest or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, a, I, I, it's like a, it's like a cage match, you know. So call the penalties that truly put a player in danger. Boarding penalties, cross checks from behind, breakaway trips, breakaway trip, the obvious ones. Yeah. But you know what? If something's going on behind the play and two guys are jostling with each other and they're swinging sticks and <laughs> they're like <laughs> punching each other, dude, let it go. Let it go, Cares. man. The crowd's getting into it. Even 3,500 fans in Montreal love that. Yeah, they do, man. I agree. Like the push after the whip. Like, don't call that. Just let it just take. I, I just rather it be extra crazy than. Stop, stop, stop. Try to police everything. I just, oh I honestly, God. truly think if you compare the, both games and you play a game that there's this penalty after penalty, and then you play a game where it's just goddamn chaotic like it was the other night, it's hard on the refs. They probably get take some shit for it. But it, as a greater good for the sport, it's just there's no comparison, man, as far as intrigue and entertainment value. If I'm covering the series – <laughs> and it may, if it means a little more, maybe, maybe I look at this differently. Maybe I react to it differently. Maybe I have a different opinion on it. But just as somebody who really loves the game and, and loves playoff hockey, like there's nothing better than to have one game on every night. Like I don't need five games on every night. I want one game on one every night that I, can fo- that I can focus on. Okay, like the Lightning and the Islanders, the, the, those, some of those games haven't been nearly as exciting no. as Montreal and Vegas. It's like, a little bit different, although the last game, game four, right? That was actually an interesting game. That save at the end of the game by Pollock. Oh, Jesus. On the goal line. Like, I've never seen that happen, Cam, by a defenseman ever in my life. To save a game at the buzzer by a defenseman, I've never seen that. Dude, that was and one no of the best given, plays I've ever seen. And no one's given credit to McDonough for making a sick Oh, my play God. Too. One of the best shots I've ever seen. The spinorama while falling down and to get and enough on your it. backhand. Oh, you ripped you it. You ripped it. That hurt his foot. That one's hurt or his hand or his foot. Like that fucking jam. Mm. That little weak back. It wasn't weak, but like that little backhand. It should have been weak. And then that he just. It, that's hockey, though, man. Like it just is. Now some of the hits from behind and stuff he could have called. Weber got mm-hmm. rocked from behind. He punched a guy in the back. Again, I don't yeah, give but then, a fuck. But then he, he gave don't. it back. He gave it back to him. Though, back to him and, and they let it go. Like, like yes. let it go, man. Even now, hey, if you want to be a tough guy and go after Shea Weber, man, you better be prepared. To eat and a he, stick. And, yep. Yeah. I, I just and let, it's, it's and let him do it. I think I, again, good referees can. I think good referees, real quick. Sorry. I think good referees yeah. can say, wow, this is Shea Weber, who's, you know, a superstar in the game, whatever. And you got a young kid or, you know, a player who's at a different tier, or whatever, going after him, obviously trying to take him out of the game. I mean, those, those are investment hits over the course of the playoff series. You want to wear down a guy like Shea Weber. Get him out of the game, get him off the ice, whatever you need to do, because it gives you an advantage. But if you're doing that, and if you want to go there, you better be prepared for the retribution. Yeah, I agree, man. I, I don't like the hits from behind, though. Like those. No, I'm with you. Dangerous. Ones, I did, man. Dangerous. The, 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 just the, the Weber at rock, but he knew he was going to get hit there. So, like, brace yourself, because I kind of feel like you could have stuck your ass out there and, like, reverse hit the dude, which is, like, horrible to get hit by a guy that does that to you. Like, anytime you, if you think you're going to hit a guy, and he sticks his ass out or puts his shoulder out in your stern. I'm like, dude, that fucks you up. Fucks yeah. you up mentally. Like, you're like, I don't want to hit this guy again because I know he's going to put his ass out. He's going to hit me right in my, like, pelvic area. I'm like, Bleh! That's what he should have done. But he's like, no, I'm just going to hit, eat this hit. I'm like, well, he's going to hit you. So it's like, it goes both ways, man. I don't like hits from behind, though, because I honestly, mm-hmm. of all the dirty shit I've done, I didn't do that to guys. I would, I would stop, and I'd be so pissed. And I take on my slam against the boards like you motherfucker. Lucky I'm fucking in control because I would have broke your fucking neck. Spin on me like that, and I just I always had that man. I, I just I I just I'd stop or I just pin them or something. I'd be so mad because they they turn on you. They used to do that man when I was playing. Like that's kind of when I was getting going, like early 2000s, spinning the D spinning on you. And hitting them. Oh yeah. Hey Cam. Fucking idiots. A lot of like the Canadian like media and stuff like that are saying, "Hey, all everybody who said the weak division, the North was weaker." I mean, it was weaker. It, it's not, it was weaker. I it mean, was weaker. It, the fuck we it, talking about? I know it was way weaker. I way mean, Montreal. Weaker. Montreal was like fourth, right? <laughs> they were fourth in the division, and 
listen, this is the beauty about the playoffs. You don't have to be the best team or whatever to advance. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you need goaltending. Sometimes it's who can truly dig in, who's willing to pay the price, who capitalizes when it matters the most. Like, I mean, who who plays the best system? I, 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 there's little things that can happen over the it's course of the game. playoff series. Man, it is completely different. Completely so different. this doesn't, like, justify – the, the idea that like the North wasn't the weakest division by far in the NHL. I mean, come on, let's be honest with you. Uh, I mean, uh, Connor McDavid, uh, Austin Matthews, these true elite superstars who just cruise through that division, putting up historic numbers. They, they didn't get hit, record, Andy. And they didn't get they hit, didn't get hit. whatever. But Montreal, man, I will say the, the longer this goes on, man, I really appreciate it. What they bring to the table and how because they because they're playoff, yeah, but they're built for the playoffs. You just have to yeah. squeak in, like yeah. all these fucking these guys are tipsy, dipsy doodle all year long. They're all like our, our teams. Uh, we're so skilled, we're the best skilled team, and all of a sudden, like Montreal's like, no, we're gonna squeak in, and we're like, we are so structured and tough and big, and our D are awesome, and our fucking goalie could stand on his head. We're playoff built, homie. You guys could try to dipsy doodle and tiptoe your way through this. We're gonna fucking catch you. And we're going to stop you. And we're going to be mean. And they're not going to call anything. And we're going to fucking slow all you down. So you guys can tiptoe all you want throughout the season. But when the big boys start playing in the playoffs, a team doesn't have to be that skilled to shut you the fuck down and own your life. Because that's exactly what they did. Not even own your life. Your whole city, they own your city. But your whole province is owned because they figured it out because they're playoff built. Not dancy, pantsy, fancy. Yeah, I'm going to look at me at... It gets so obvious, dude. It was so obvious. Hey, Cam, for years, people have been going to Vegas, and you catch things at Vegas. I mean, you may get a virus. You may get something that you bring back with you from Vegas. But I never heard of people going to Vegas and they're bringing back COVID. Like, that's what's happening now. That's where we're at now. People go to Vegas, and then they bring back COVID, like the head coach of Montreal. You got the GM now of Vegas. It's not funny. You you hope they're okay. I hear a lot of people saying, hey, Health is is at the forefront. Well, yeah, no shit. I mean, you what hope everybody. Would, would they get, dude? Like, they're not even allowed to do anything there. The, no, even the no, Vegas no. guys, because they're playing the Canadians, aren't uh, now they're under can, can, uh, Canada's right. rule, and they're right. like, you're not allowed. And I'm sure Vegas, is like, oh, cool, fucking right, it's awesome. awesome. Yeah, but Cam, even when the games are in Vegas, even the Vegas players are on like this modified. Court. I know that's what they said. They can, yeah, they can, they can stay, even go. They to, can stay at home in Montreal. Obviously, they got to stay in the bubble and whatever. They got to bubble yeah. up, but. I've known people for years. They go, they, they catch something in Vegas, right? Yeah, well, I mean, they're, they're, catching, they're catching COVID now. So the head coach can't even be on the bench, dude. And then now the GM of Vegas, he's got to self-isolate. He's got a quarantine, man. I mean, it's just kind of a mess, dude. I, I don't Aren't know. they all vaccinated, though? Well, apparently uh, Ducharme, Dom Ducharme, the head coach of, uh, of uh, Montreal, uh, he had his second vaccination, but he hadn't gotten through that 14 day period where you kind of get that full immu- Does he immunization. Feel like I don't know, man. I, I think his, his suits probably got him sick. He's got terrible suits, dude. Does I, I will say that. Terrible suits. Yeah, he's not talked about it at all, man. Like, he's just. Like, what do you think of his look in general, dude? Uh, I, no, I can't, I can't even picture it. I keep thinking he's of got, fucking Mark he's got the white. Look. He's got the white hair. The white yeah, hair. I mean, I don't even pay attention to that dude, to be honest with you. I know what and Pete's look like, is, and it's he's blonde got like, veins. He's wearing like vein, tux- tuxedo jackets or something. <laughs> and- he, that sucks he got COVID, though. Look, they're not allowed to do anything, so I don't know how he got it. Maybe on the airplane or something. Fuck, I don't know. I don't know. That's, know. that's what I'm saying. I, I hear people go to Vegas, and they catch things. I don't know well, about that. Yeah, well, when you're, you're fucking laying into hookers and shit, you're going to catch a mm-hmm. bunch of shit. Yeah. I never got into that bullshit, man. I don't know how people do it, to be honest with you. Hey, people gave me it, shit when I, when, I, when I said when the when Montreal signed, uh, they traded and then they signed Josh Anderson. I said, man, this guy's a sick player. Players around the league say it all the time. This guy is sick. And they're like, people are like, oh, whatever. He's like, man, Columbus, that's a trade you look back on. You're going to be like, you know, I know they got Max Domi and whatever, and he's put up some good you know numbers in the past. But this Josh Anderson, man, I mean, he's just a guy that you want on your roster in the play. They've got some good players there in that's Montreal. Man. I hope they, that dude's a stud, I hope, man. I hope they can continue this. Who do you want to win this series? Vegas, I want Vegas to win everything, dude. You do? Hell yeah. It's great for hockey. I want to see their parade. I want to see them go crazy there. Fuck yeah, dude. All right. It's good for hockey, man. I, I don't Train. give a fuck otherwise. I want the sport to 
grow so people listen to us more and they fucking pay they <laughs> they realize hockey's 10 times more fun to watch than baseball yeah. we're all baseball they're like how can we make the game faster how sticky stuff faster sticky stuff boring boring faster sticky stuff like what the fuck we're in hockey you're like okay somebody murdered somebody yet oh yeah they did we're gonna talk about that like that's i know man it, <laughs> baseball Lock, i can't even watch it in. I Can't felt bad for Mark. I felt bad for Mark Andre Fleury, though, man. You know, like to see that go yeah. down. I know. I know. Bro- Brody asked the question, "Who do you go with now?" I mean, it's, it's great not question, even like, Brody. Great. <laughs> I mean, it's not even like a question, yeah, really. You got to go with. How about Robin Leonard? Leonard? No, he's like you guys all talk shit. Mm-hmm. He seems like rolled down, man. Like, he's got some issues, that guy, man. I think he's yeah, hardcore he depression, and you well, know, he's he's, he's, he's overcome some of that. He's overcome some of that. that. Yeah. You know, and. But, like, I think getting that positive feedback on social media, like, you know, makes him feel good about himself. He even says it. I also see media. I also see guys when they do interviews are always so, like, uh, re- reluctant to talk to them. Like, they, they look at them as enemies, which they somewhat are. And there's some guys like, what's that? Like, you know, I don't know. He's just so, like, he's just always on edge when he's talking to the media. So you can't pick mm. – I, I can't picture him smiling or anything. So he always looks so down, man. But I bet she's a good dude in the locker room and stuff like that. I, I don't really know. Oh yeah, about him. no, I think it's I think his teammates like him. I think he's really yeah. come around. I think early in his career he was a little wild, you know, a little wild. I don't know anything about that, Andy. No idea. Well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I think that well, he went through a couple jams like I did for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. We'll continue to uh, to break down the other series as we move along. We want to get to Mark Crawford though on this edition of the Cam and Strick podcast. Uh, really good guest. Made his mark as a young coach, what, 33 years old, something like that. Wins the Jack Adams Stanley Cup. He actually played in the NHL. People may not know that. He played like over yeah. 100 games in the league. And um, played and for Mark Vancouver. Cup. Coached a long time. Some great teams in Vancouver. But, you know, he's been through a lot, man. He's been in the mix yeah. with a lot of different things, too. And so we had to talk about that as well. You know, and listen, he answered the questions. He knew we were yeah. going to ask those questions. It's always interesting because – when I asked him to come on the podcast cam, like he was very familiar with what we do with our show, who we've had on. He's listened to a number of episodes, which I really appreciate. I respect. Oh, man. I love that, man. And, you know, Cam and I listen, our philosophy is never to bring somebody on to make them feel uncomfortable. dude. No. We want them to be comfortable, nope. you know, so we're going to ask the questions, but not done in a interrogating way. But in a conversational way, dude. And I think that's exactly what we did here in this interview with Mark Crawford. Did we ask the questions that needed to be asked and he answered them? Well, there's different guys, man. Like, if it's a former player or a teammate, I'm going to be like, what the fuck is this? You know, but Mark Crawford mm-hmm. type, like, you got to ease into it, man. But I also, we also have to be real, too, to our fans, dude. They don't want us to fucking tiptoe and shit either. So it's like, there's a balance, dude. And he was totally cool, man. He's not coming on. He's not. He's not stupid. <laughs> like he's like, okay, I know these guys. Like, yeah, I'll come tell my story on here, and and that's what we want. We want guys to be like, well, if I'm gonna pick any place out to to tell my side of things, I'll do it with you guys, and that's what everybody says yes to us. So it's mm-hmm. we have a good balance, Andy. And don't get me wrong. Like we sometimes we after I'm like, God, well, did I say did I fuck that up? Or like, eh, is he pissed at us? Like, are we good? Like, we still really worry about that. But there, again, we have to entertain, dude. And you have a fucking chance to explain yourself. But we are going to have some questions for you, man. Like, I can't, mm-hmm. we can't let shit go, dude. Now, there's some guys that are like, we, we're certainly not talking about this particular thing. You've had guys mm-hmm. say that, and you have to respect that, too. Yeah. So it's you like, a, again, I know. not too many guys some, do that, dude. Some guys had to like play their career, though, and like they created a lot of like, uh, controversy and yet they don't want to talk about it. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's like, it's like, dude, it's okay. Sometimes it might make you feel better for to get it off your chest and for people to understand how it impacted you, how you were affected, what you were thinking. Like guys like Rafi Torres, man, Matt Cook and these guys, like they, they were the poster children, dude, for a lot of those hits that are no longer, uh, allowed in the game, dude. They got tons of suspensions and whatever. And these guys just, for whatever reason, man, they're they're they're. I think they're like they're scared to talk about. They scared. It. Get on here and talk. We all fuck guys up, man. Get get on here and talk about it. People will like you more if you came on and said, "Dude, I just had that in the back of my head. I just wanted to." I go, "I get it, homie. I get that crazy thing that you have in the back of your head that tells you the mm-hmm. Satan thing that tells you. I get it. I get it, man. I did the same shit." 
to fucking talk about it. Let's talk about it. People will like respect you 20 because right when you think of Rafi Torres, like, oh, fuck him. Like, really? Unless you really know the guy in, in the outside world, they're like, oh, fuck him. Because you think of just negativity when you have this. But when you come on here and you're like a good dude and you explain yourself and you're like, yeah, I have no, exp-, or you don't. And you're like, I don't know how to explain that. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, it just makes it. And just, I've done crazy shit. I've done stupid shit. I've gotten jams. But if I ever went on a podcast, I'm not worried about any question, dude. And I'll answer anything. And I've done weird shit. And I know I fucked up on some shit. And like, I'll answer and I'll explain it. And then people are like, oh, okay. But if you don't, then that, that's all you're, that's all they think about you is what you did last. And usually the mm-hmm. last thing something negative. Chris Simon, get on here, dude. We, well, we, he's we hard to find. Him. Listen, if yeah, anybody has his doing. contact, uh, anybody has his contact info, dude, I've been I, giving we about. We follow each other on Facebook, and he's, he's fucking catching big old I fucking. Know. I don't know what the fuck they are, but he's eat, probably eating them whole. And I like, get on here, dude. Let's talk about it, dude. It's not all bad. Like you no, had an awesome I, career. I, I, I've been given about twenty five different numbers for him, dude. He changes God. his number like every Donna six months, I think. Brash. I think he buys one of those, uh, you know, those prepaid phone cards, those prepaid yeah, phone, cell phones. When you yeah, yeah. when you run when you run out of your minutes, you change your yeah, number. You throw I think it away. That's, what you have. <laughs> that's what's going on there. All my but drug some of these guys, back in the day. Yeah. some of these guys that just like want to, and I'm not saying you have to come on, but like your reasoning is like, oh, I, I just don't do podcasts. Well, dude, like you fuck people up your entire career. You got suspended like <laughs> nonstop. Like, what, what do you mean you don't do podcasts? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what does that mean? Are you hiding? Like people so. still love you, man. They want to hear about you, and you know you have a huge fan base. And maybe what, people what, don't like what you. Do you. What do you do? You do TV. Well, you you're do not radio? doing. They're, they're not doing anything. I don't do podcasts. Well, what, 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 what do you? What do? what do? Nothing. They do. Not, I don't talk to anybody. <laughs> Forget my whole career. I don't want to talk about my my whole career is so bad yeah. that I'm not going to talk about with any fan, any legit hardcore hockey fans. And we have the most hardcore fans on yeah. listening to this podcast, like the hardcore mm-hmm. bad boys. And it's like, they might hate you now, but if they listen to with us and you're funny and you're cool and you just like, maybe you don't have an exact explanation of why you did shit. And certainly I don't, but like, they're going to like it 10 times better, dude. It's just like, yeah. why wouldn't you do that? I don't know. Yeah. So Mark Crawford, man, uh, interesting conversation. Plus he like went through some other stuff, the whole Gretzky thing in the uh, he, Olympics. I forgot he, about that. He dude. coached Austin Matthews in Switzerland, like before yeah. Matthews ever played a game in the NHL. And now he's still coaching with the Chicago Blackhawks. He had to take a leave of absence, but he's been around Kane and Taves and some of those guys, man. So people like um, him, dude. And you know, he's a lifer. He's a lifer, dude. He's been lifer. around the game for a long time. He's chilling on the St. Lawrence River, man. He's our chilling type of guy. with like ten women. He's got his wife and all her uh, her friends, and he's like, <laughs> dude, I'm chilling on my dock. My wife's here with like, which to me is kind of a nightmare mm-hmm. because I ain't hanging out with my wife and ten of her friends, and I'm stuck in a in my lake yeah. house with them. Yeah. I, I'll leave and go to my buddy's house or something. I can't handle that nonsense. Yeah. But he's probably a cool cat and he can do it. But he's got, yeah. he, he's just chilling. The wind was going a little bit. We had to be like, dude, c- cover that up a little bit, homeboy. But I like that, man. I like when guys work their ass off, they do all this shit and they have a cool dock and they know how to chill like that, man. It's just yeah. cool. You're know. like, oh, he, you're like, he's golfing. See, like, I, I, I can he feel it. Have. I knew he was on the river. I knew he was on the river in the boat. And Cam's like, he's golfing right now. He's golfing. Yeah, he's like whispering to me. I'm like, no, you know not. nothing about lakes. You know nothing <laughs> about boats. And you know nothing about golf. Hey, here's what I do know. We've got some great new merchandise, Cam. And we got yeah, all man. the hoodies and T-shirts and everything. These fit. The hats are unbelievable, which we need to get some, by the way. They need yeah, to I send know. us some hats. They sent yeah. us a bunch of other stuff. So listen to all the people who are listening right now, man. Check out the new merchandise. Just go to camandstrick.com. And... Um, and, and check it all out. Long sleeve t-shirts, short sleeve t-shirts, really cool ho- uh, hoodies, a bunch of different options, different color variations, a new logo that we've introduced also, man. So check it out. New hats. And uh, it's out of Canada, too. So for the Canadian audience, man, who don't want to, you, know, you don't want to pay that shipping. I know, man. From the U.S. You don't have to. Man. Now, now we've got a vendor up, the, up there in Canada. So check that yep. out. What check it out, guys. Stuff? Dude, I love you've it, been man. Wearing it. You've been wearing it every Dude, day. Dude, I only wear free stuff, man. It's like I'm such a scavenger, I guess. I I, I don't like to shop for myself with clothes because I, I, I always fuck it up. So Kate shops for me, and she's just like, you know, I, we just haven't gone shopping. Like, I, I tell her just to buy me shit. So this stuff, man, I love it. I wear, I'll wear it every goddamn day. 
interviews, all that shit. I don't care. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's all I do. We're the same shit. Please hook me up with clothes. Please. All right, let's get to Mark Crawford. Well, the Camera Strip okay. Podcast, as always, is brought to you by CarShield and CarShield.com. 800-857-2481. 800-857-2481. Again, get in there and just feel good about yourself. Don't have any worries in the back of your head. That's what you get with CarShield because you've got that protection. Take the car wherever you want it. If you have something go down, if you need to get it fixed, you can choose where it goes. They hook you up with a rental car. They take care of everything, man. So, like, if something goes down in your vehicle, and it could be an alternator, could be the computer, which goes down. I mean, we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. Your engine goes out. It could be something small. It could be a starter. Who knows? Dude, all you got to yeah. do is call Car Shield. They take care of everything. Yes, they do, Andy. <laughs> yes, they do. My are starter went out. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you chewing? Are you chewing? I just got it out of my mouth. No, no. Well, I didn't know where you're going to stop, and I was going to say Car Shield. Like they are the best of the best. Easy people to do. Great, big hockey fans, by the way. Yes, they support yes. youth hockey. I mean, look what they do around here. Let's be honest here. But my starter went out, and I was waving goodbye to everybody at the Mexican joint, Eureka. And I was saying bon voyage. Everybody's like, just like the Titanic when it leaves. You know, everybody's like throwing shit. Like, yeah, bye, bye, bye. And I get in my car, and then you know, right when everybody kind of comes over to your car, like to tap on it, say bye, bye, bye. I fucking turn the key, and it's like it's like a, it's just such a beautiful moment for me just to leave and just wave and do my, and the motherfucker didn't start. Then all those fans that were saying bye to me are like, this guy's a fucking loser. Mm. And then Car Shield picked my car up. No, no. Then they're like, we like him again. So they yeah. help me, Andy. Yeah, they do. They do. They help everybody. They can help you. They can help anybody. So again, mention the promo code Cam. You're going to save ten percent. Eight hundred eight five seven two four eight one. Daredevil hockey. Oh, we love these guys too, man. These oh, gotcha. guys are unbelievable, man. I mean, Saving again, lives. I see all these kids at the rink. I'm seeing more and more of these kids wearing the Daredevil hockey protection. Is your kid <laughs> in it yet? Are you are you doing the right thing? Are you making the proper decisions for your kids? I mean, please, like, help your kids. Listen, the number one cause of emergency room visits for youth hockey is skate lacerations. It's serious it stuff. Daredevil Shit. Hockey, use that promo code CAM and STRICT. That's all caps, and you're going to save 25%. It's a really, really good savings, okay? Lightweight, compression base layer designed with Kevlar cut-resistant fabric. It protects all the areas where you can get cut. And I don't want to be too crazy, CAM. This could be life-saving, dude. Like, honestly, no, you could die from a state laceration in the wrong spot. It's not worth it. Yeah, you're in a you're in a rink at ten o'clock at night. You think somebody's gonna fucking save your life from there? You think the Zamboni driver's gonna fucking save you? You're gonna get person cut like that. The, 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 the girl, the concession stands make. Oh, I'm a doctor too, by the way. Although I'm still working at the rink at ten o'clock. No, no, you're not. No one. No, you're bleeding, and like everybody's gonna have to jump on board and like say, yeah, "Fuck, it's fucked up." No, I don't want to deal with it. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. All right, Bellman and Bellman.com as well. If you're looking for that new vehicle, man, I mean, this is no better yeah. place to go. I ain't playing around no more. To go. I ain't playing around, around no more. I want that motherfucking dually. I'm not playing oh around no more. Yeah. I told you what the fuck I want to do with it. A side by side. I'm going to take the goddamn side by side, take it up to the goddamn Grand Tetons, or I'll take that badass thing from Byerly, that awesome ass RV that sticks out where you go, yeah. and it opens up yeah. like, Neh. And you have your cooler back there, the puppies. I got my gun just in case shit goes down. Okay, okay. Drive yeah, leave, leave I'm just the fucking gun. say, no, no, no. Leave the no, gun. No. I want that shit kicker. I want that fucking diesel, man. That badass dually diesel with the uh, the uh, twin cab, whatever, big old cab in it, so I can put mm -hmm. but just load shit up. I want to go to Grand Tetons and see hey, fucking bear. Our listeners are so attentive. I got a message the other day being like, hey, just so you know, you can't. They're all serious, like 100% serious. You can fly with your gun. <laughs> you just yeah. got to check it. He told me exactly what you have it. to do. I'm not doing it. Uh, no, no, no. I drive. I, I don't, don't have fly. a gun. I got vertigo. I don't, I don't have a gun. Andy, we know you don't. That's why anybody can rob your house and you're done. You're going to be calling me. I'm like, I'm way out here in St. Albans. Like, I know a guy kind of by you. Like, Is it life-threatening? Yeah, well, he's got a gun to my head. Well, just be nice to him. So I got a I would give him that steak that you cooked two days ago. Oh yeah, He'll, he won't kill you now. Oh, I'm gonna get send. A gun. I'm gonna, Andy, I'm, get it. I might, Andy, get a gun. You're you're fucking crazy. I can't I believe you don't some, have a uh, weapon. Some weapon. Dry ice in a box. 
and uh, send that steak over to you, dude, with a curry. Yeah, yeah, half eaten steak. That's what I, I'll eat it. It hasn't been even, touched. I don't even eat my leftovers, dude. I'm certainly not eating your fucking leftovers. You don't eat leftovers? You, nah. I mean, really? yeah. Oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty weird with that stuff. Like, I like it fresh. Now, this if I cook a fat fucking tomahawk, boy, I'm gonna cut that mug up and then put it with my eggs. I'm gonna sear that bad boy with some butter. Eat it in the morning. But other than that, I'm like, eh, I'll get more. And no, my guy, don't my be guy like gave that. me he, he gave me steak butter. And there's like a specific that's butter good. for steak. Yeah, it's I got garlic, rosemary, and shit. Yeah, I right. got some of that for you. Yeah, yeah. So just you yeah. know, Steaks. remember that. Thanks. I remember, can't, I can't that. make that myself. Two seconds. <laughs> so I'm gonna hook you up with a, uh, a little bit of steak butter and my steak. I'm gonna send it to you in a courier. Yeah, you should get but, a weapon though, Andy. I'm not gonna lie to you on that. Okay, I, I got a sponsor. I have a Nerf gun, dude. I've got like a bunch of Nerf guns. They, they look real too. So, I, I mean, think about, I think about that. Not that I use it or I'm good with it or I'm even comfortable with it. Although I know what to do, but I always think that somebody's coming to my, like, gonna break it into my house. Like I just, I need to. If shit goes down, I just need to be able to protect myself. I don't use it. I don't show it off. Although I did send you a picture one time, but I don't. But if you if shit goes down, I'm fucking put. That's right by me. I'm like I got a little thing. I like, boom. You know, I don't know. Well, you what you get kids, is, man. we got three kids. I've and got, a, in, I've got an alarm by, system. The worst city in the world, but whatever. Oh, that alarm alarm system. Okay. They'll kick your door down so fucking fast, dude. And then what are you going to do? I'm going to call that. I, hello, Robert. I just made the call. <laughs> They'll be here in 15 minutes. Do what you want. The fuck out of here, dude. So Bellman, by the way. They've got everything you need over there in Troy, Missouri. Cadillac, Buick, GMC on one side of the street. The other side, you got the uh, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram. They've got something for everybody. I'm looking at that Escalade, the Kings of the Road, or maybe a Yukon. I know people are having trouble getting cars and stuff like that. Not oh, Bellman, dude. they got plenty yeah. of inventory for you. They, they, they're the one and only, by the way, yes, because everybody yes. else. It's, dude, look, at, look at the car lots. Scattered. Fucking desert, dude. I know. No, I know. Nothing. They can't even get them over here. COVID no, they fucked can't. all they that can't. shit up, dude. All the parts, all that shit. It's not even mm -hmm. the car. It's like the parts that come from shit. Ugh. Hey, we haven't told the people in a while. Real quick, though. I, uh, the, the customer service you get at Bellman. Hey, just explain oh. it a little bit real quick well, before well, we get if, to Mark. Well, if your wife... Mark with a C, by the way. Mark with a C. With very a, bizarre. Uh, if your wife walks into Bellman, like... Whatever. If your wife wa uh, walks into Bellman, she's not going to be fucking creeped out by the swinging dicks coming out there fucking thinking they're badass. They think that they used to beat me up or something or that they're better. That was better than Kane when he played me. Case is like, shut the fuck up and like, let me like get my shit done. Like, uh, quit, quit talking about yourself, dick. Quit swinging your dick around. It's tiny anyway. None of that. None of it at Bellman. They're sweet. They're like, well, hello, Miss Jansen. Come on in. Would, would you like a water? Yeah, sure. Bit of bit. What would you like to do? Go do your thing. Yeah, it's okay. Just let me know if you have any questions. That, that, that's what you want. Not this motherfucker at six foot four who thought he was good in football, who didn't do shit, dropped out, and all of a sudden he's doing this, and he's like, ooh, look at this guy. I got this one. <laughs> I'm done with it. Done with it. Not at Bellman. All right. All right, let's get to Mark with a C. Mark Crawford, dude. Lots to get into with him. He's had a long career. He's still doing it. Won a Stanley Cup. Smart hockey man. And he gives his take on some of the series, too. So people will enjoy this. Mark with a C, Mark Crawford. Longtime NHL coach with us now on the Cam and Strict podcast. Also, I'm on Cameo, by the way. If you want get to get the fuck out of here. Cameo, I need 15 of them this week. I have, you did, I have a discount. Did you, no, no, no. I, I got a cameo. Cameo's on discount. I, no shit, it is. <laughs> Should be fucking you paying them. It's, it's so much of a discount that actually you guys get paid if you do a Cameo with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark Crawford, man. Enjoy this. Camastrick.com for the latest merchandise. Check that out, as always, right here on the Camastrick Podcast. Hello. Mark. Hey, Mark. What's Crow. Going? Is it Crow? It's Crow. Is it? It's Crow. Hey, who gave you that nickname? Uh, you know, I got it way back when I was playing in Vancouver, mm. and I think it was Gary Lupel. Uh, Gary Lupel was a funny guy. He used to give nicknames to everybody. That year, I got called up from Fredericton, New Brunswick, to uh, Vancouver seven times. 
Oh. And uh, they would always say it was 747, and I flew across country. So then they, they shortened it to the crew. Golly. Seven if you got times. called up seven times, I mean, that means you got sent down seven times, yeah, bro. Yeah, th- yeah. positive, yeah. negative. Yeah. <laughs> it's always better getting called up. Hey, listen, we just hit record and we just go. Yeah. I'm always curious how much you reflect on that when you have to send a player down. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. you've been there, Crow. Yeah, absolutely. You do um, reflect on it. And I think the one thing that I've always remembered is when you give bad news, like, you know, it's tough giving bad news, but it's a lot tougher receiving it. It really is. And if you never forget that, I think as a, as a young coach or a young executive, that's always a uh, wise piece of advice to follow because it is hard for people when you are shattering their dreams or it just seems like you're shattering their dreams uh, well yeah when they look at their paycheck when they look at their paycheck exactly well and and here's another thing though it it could go so the first time some sometimes i got sent down the first time i went back down to albany from jersey and i'm like okay i did it like i went in the locker room and i'm like i'm confident like what's up guys and but then yeah. when you get a little bit older, <laughs> then you get sent down like, oh, yay, three fights a night. I can't wait for this one. <laughs> you know? Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. And, you know, Cam, I remember you that first year that you were in Albany because that was the lockout year. And, and uh, where my uh, summer residence uh, is, is Cornwall, Ontario. And so I would always drive down, go down and get Glens Falls, and I would get Albany, and I'd do that circuit quite a bit and i can remember watching you boy you fought everybody that year oh <laughs> yeah. my god i think 45 that was a crazy hey, year i'd though. like to read those reports yeah <laughs> like how are, how are his hands how is his skating his hockey sense hey, that was robbie fatora coach and he was awesome come on now Crowley, yeah. awesome. but bust those robbie out Fitora, for us and yeah. he, am i not mistaken i think zach Preezy was there right yes he was yeah that he was... had a little better hands than you yeah. Yeah. i think a little better just yeah, a little better good. just ask him he's a better kid <laughs> too tell overall you. actually cam's scared him one time cam took him out one time mark oh, on a true story know, took I him know. out and oh. that was the last time they ever hung out together something happened in jersey <laughs> oh marky dude something happened in jersey and uh zach was like i'm not hanging out with you ever again and he didn't <laughs> <laughs> hey so what's going on with you what are you doing nowadays like during the summer are you watching hockey every night like what's keeping you busy i i have been watching so much hockey this year i've playoffs have been oh yeah they've been great and you know like uh, up here um I've got a, uh, a group of in-laws who are, they are such Montreal Canadian fans. It's just killing me. Um, thankfully, my brother works for the Canadians. My brother's the head pro scout uh, for Montreal. So I'm really happy for him. I'm really happy for Burge. But I got to listen to all these Habs fans and uh, everybody just just loving life up here. Uh, and, and you know what? Ontario just, uh, our Ontarians are just able to go to Montreal now. So I think this weekend there's going to be a huge influx of people heading into Montreal that just kind of be around the atmospheres. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, well, 3,500 going to be in the building. 3,500. So. They just 10,000 outside, baby. I mean, I would like yeah. to see, listen, just as a fan who's, who's watching these games right now, and, you know, Montreal, traditional team, original six, whatever, in the playoffs, in the conference final, like yeah. for the first time in a long time, I want to see yeah. a packed house. I want my kids to watch playoff hockey with me and be like, yo, this is Montreal. Well, this is normal. This yeah. is what happens yeah. in Montreal. Look at the scene in Montreal. And, and oh, yeah. kids are deprived of that right now, Mark, because of everything. Yeah. And you know what? It is it is really neat to see the local coverage and to just see how everybody, because they, they, they opened up. Uh, a little bit a few weeks ago in Montreal. So, you know, they've had a couple of weeks of people at least enjoying the celebration. And, uh, you know, really throughout the country, like this is uh, this is great when the Canadian team gets uh, that far. You know, I mean, obviously this year, one of the, one of the teams had to get there, but it's kind of nice that it is uh, Montreal. If they ever get to the next round, look out. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting. I think, you know, really looking at it right now, it is an extreme toss-up. For all four teams, they all look like they could win if they all get the right break, or if the other people get a bad break because of injury. It can be anybody's ball game, so it's really interesting uh, from a hockey standpoint. Yeah, it's like one team looks unbelievable, unbeatable, and then the next yeah. game, the other team looks unbeatable, structured, goalies unreal, and so you're like, okay, what now? But that's good. Hockey has a yeah. great product right now. Yeah, they, they really yeah. do. Hey, well, Mark, yeah. Mark, let me ask you this though, because. As a coach, like how important the center position is because you take one center out of the lineup, 
Like, you know, Chandler Stevenson, he's not in the lineup. And it just disrupts everything for Vegas. They've got a great group of wingers, but up the middle, they're not as impressive. Like, that can really deteriorate a team, like, probably more than people realize, right? Yeah, man, I think you can say the same thing for the Islanders if they're mm-hmm. a minus uh, J.G. Peugeot. Um, Chandler Stevenson has been uh, absolutely outstanding this year. And the line, you know, you know Petretti is such a great shooter. And oh. Stone is such a great protector of the puck, a stripper of the puck, and, and shooter of the puck. But they need somebody that gets them the puck, and Chandler Stevenson does that so well. You really saw it uh, last game. Uh, how tough it is for Nicholas Twa, who I think has been spectacular uh, in this playoffs. How, how how tough it is for him to jump up a notch and play a different style of game. Yeah. Um, you know, and you're right that that missing a key player uh, is is so crucial. And I think uh, you know with the Islanders, uh, hopefully JG uh, uh, Pager's not out because Pager has been. Uh, he's been number one uh, for them, and they've got the, they've got a few other guys maybe that can play center with uh, Beauvillier and uh, and Barzell, and you go on down the list. But Pager has really been a guy that can go after the other team's top guys, and oh, uh, shit that's disturber. important. He's a shit disturber. Yeah. I like the, he'll fight you too. Remember, he's in like he's a that, tough kid. Yeah, he doesn't he's give a, a shit. A, no wonder Lou loves no. him. And 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 you know we had him in Ottawa, and I'll tell you what. Um, he just competes so hard. You give him a challenge, like playing against Crosby, he elevates his game. He really loves that uh, that challenge. And, and look what they did. I mean, they they knocked off Pittsburgh uh, and Crosby. They knocked off um, uh, who did they play in the last round? Come on now, I'm Boston. my senior moment. Boston, Boston and yeah. Bergeron. Yeah. Bergeron. He 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 loves playing against Bergeron. And Bergeron's probably one of the hardest guys to play against in the league. Oh damn! He may right. not be the most dangerous, but he's one of the hardest guys to play against. But JG uh, Pager loves that challenge, and uh, you know I have so much respect for how he plays the game. What a great guy he is! So hey, let me ask you this real quick because I got sat out a bunch of times, as you you know. But so how did you? So if there was a guy that was kind of on the fourth line, one two guy that you kind of like, you got to look at who you're playing. You're like kind of dissect it. You talk to coaches. How would you? Okay, how how would you play that? Would you put the name up and cross his name out? Would you talk to a guy? Like, how'd you do sitting guys out and, and, and things like that? Maybe a guy that was in the league a while that you kind of had respect for. Well, I, I can tell you a story. It goes way back to when I was coaching in the American League. It was my first year. We went to the finals uh, against Barry Melrose's Adirondack uh, Wings. It was game seven. And I, I had to set out a, a veteran player. And I took the chicken crap way out and i put it on the board and i never uh, I, I i never got as much criticism as i did for that one move and it was right like the player uh, was right he criticized me you know you should you should have had the, the guts to talk to me but i you know i was young and i was probably i knew it was bad news and i didn't really want to disrupt uh, everything but now you know now that i've been around a little bit I do give the tough news and I don't ask anybody else to do it, you know, uh, um, and, and it's the right thing to do. Like you've, if you've got tough news, it's better to give it in person. It's they may not like it. They're always going to be mad. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I think they respect you years and years later. Um, if you uh, treated them like uh, quality, uh, human beings that they are. And especially if it's a, if it's a fourth line guy, that's character and, plays a tough game and that sort of thing. Like, that's a thankless job at the best of times. And, um, you know, I, I was a fourth line guy, so I bet sat out an awful lot. I'll tell you the other thing though, uh, as coaches, we always, uh, we always talk about what's the best way to do that. And there's some funny stories. Uh, I can remember one of the guys that uh, I coached with Rob Cooks and he was in town, and he said, one of the coaches there once walked in and he I had a couple of weights with him he went into the guy and he put the weights right in front of his Right in front of his oh. stall. So you got to have a good report to be able to get away with that one. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not sitting out by throwing the weights in front of him. No, that can't, that can't be easy. That's rattling right there. I mean, <laughs> especially a veteran guy, you know? Yeah. You would have done it to you, Andy. I mean, they would have like, put the weights right in front of Listen, we asked Babcock about that when he, like, sat out Spezza, you know? Yeah, like they signed Stuff Spezza like too. that. I don't know. Like, how, how do you look at that? Like, not that situation specifically, Crow, but... 
just a veteran guy, like you value veterans. Like how much, how important is it for you to have veterans in your lineup versus a bunch of young guys? I mean, as a coach, well, like, you feel like you need veterans. I think it's, you know, if you look at, um, at the season this year and the teams that, that did well, didn't have a lot of, uh, of rookies in their lineup. Um, or they had absolute great quality. We played a lot of rookies this year, and that was our mandate, was to, to play these young guys, especially our young prospects on defense. And we had 310 uh, rookie games this year, which equates to very close to six rookies in the lineup every night. Uh, we had games at the end of the season where we had uh, we had 10 rookies one night uh, at the end of the season in, in the lineup. Um, so, yeah, you do appreciate veterans, and you see what's happening. Uh, like a lot of times, especially with the way a lot of veteran players maybe lose a step, you've got to wait till you get them in the playoffs to, to, to really see the value of them. And I think, you know, you look at, at, at any of these teams, I mean, you can look at a, at a guy like Corey Perry, yeah. you know, there's yeah, some yeah. games in the season where he doesn't look very good mm -hmm. because he's not as quick and he's not as, uh, He's not as uh, agile as he once was. He's he's still as greasy as he ever was, <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh, his greasiness is paying off big time for them uh, once they get to the playoffs. And you know, I always remember one of my favorite players ever in the game was Mike Keane. Yep. And Mike Keane, I had him right at the end his last year in uh, in Vancouver. And I remember I went to sit him out in Game Six. So I brought him in. And I said, Mike, he said, I'm going to need you in day, Game Seven. I'm I'm going to need you. Uh, so I'm going to sit you out tonight. I'm sorry, but that's my decision. And that's what it is. And he just hounded me and hounded me. He said, well, why are you sitting me out? He said, because I need you in game seven. And so he, he, then he said to me, and he worked me over, and he said, well, you know, am I, am I not uh, giving you enough? Am I not, uh, he says, don't sit me out because you're trying to arrest me. He said, I don't need any rest. Anyways, anyways, long story short, he wore me down. <laughs> He kept knocking on my door, and I played him in the game in game six. And he was good, and we won game six, triple overtime in Calgary. So I played him in game seven. He was our best player in game seven. And again, I, I, I just go back to it. Like, there's guys that they know how to play in playoff games and that experience of how to play in them. Oh, yeah. There's no replacement for it. They know how to get themselves up. They know how they can get away uh, with. They know how to play. They won't get intimidated. And if you can get them to the playoffs, a lot of these veteran players, that's where they pay the dividends. It's in the regular season. Yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not in February where it's like the grind where these guys are yeah. a little bit older. But, like, even yeah. like that, though, like, you know, you always have that same story with the young kids. Like, I'm ready. I'm good. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when the older cats are on, like, dude, I've fucking done this. Like, I've grinded. Yeah. You've seen, I'm a warrior. Look in my yeah. eyes, and I'm telling you, put me in this damn game. Like, there's a big wow. difference. There's a huge, there, there is a huge, huge difference. Um, Dick Duff, who's a, an old mentor uh, of mine, played with the Leafs and played with the Canadians. Uh, he always told me, though, he says, you know, you, you, you need your veteran, Jess, says, but you do need young legs. And you need young legs to get you through. So that's where I like to see the balance that that teams have. Like Montreal, uh, for instance, right now, like that balance of having the young Cole Caulfield in there. And I think that Romanov kid has played very well when they've mm -hmm. put him in the lineup. But they, they haven't given Cucking, uh, Kukinemi too much. They haven't given Caulfield too much. They haven't given Romanov too much, and the older guys are are getting it done. So yeah. there's a real sense of uh, of commitment um, to the veteran players, and I think that commitment pays off, and they run uh, the right way. So. Hey, what are you doing? Are you golfing? Are right you now? golfing right now? Because like, like, we're we're no, going to call you I'm Crow sitting, anyway. It sounds like you're about you thirty thousand right feet what off the of, ground. Where, where are you at I'm right now? I'm sitting on the St. Lawrence River uh, on my dock. Ooh. Oh, damn, my wife boy. Has a bunch of, my wife has a bunch of girls over here, and uh, I didn't think she'd want me to talk about hockey all day with them. Uh, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you got wait. You got a boat out there. I got to ask. Sorry, Andy. We're gonna get into hockey stuff. What kind of setup you got there? So you're on the. You're right there. You got a dock. You're looking. The wind's blowing. You got a boat. Yep. Like, what's your setup look like? I got a uh, Challenger 2000. I bought it off of Craig Billington. Craig Billington yeah. used to have oh, yeah. a yeah, yeah. Biller used to have a uh, uh, boat um, shop up in the Muskokas that his brother and him. And he told me, he says, Crow, I know you're not very good at this time. He says, I'm going to get you this. 
it's a jet boat, so you don't have to worry about you know how deep the water is because yeah. he knows I don't pay attention too much. Isn't that and I've, I've had it for I've had it for about uh, uh, sixteen years. Here. I just got I got to take it out of the water later today because I got a little bit of a, a, of a crack in it. And I got to go get it patched. Yeah, yeah, go, get, yeah, get go get ahead and do fixed. that, Crow. Hey, when go Jordan when, when when Jordan Bennington got uh, got called up, everyone was calling him Craig Billington. It's like they couldn't they, know. they couldn't like separate the two that. names. You know, so <laughs> that name still resonates. It's, you know, Craig so funny, Billington. Yeah. We still hear that name. The Cam and Strick Podcast is brought to you by Car Shield. You know, nothing more frustrating, Cam, than when that engine light comes on and you know right off the bat you're going to have to spend thousands oh. of dollars <gasps> to repair your vehicle. Call 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM mm. or visit carshield.com and use the code CAM to save 10%. Yeah. That's carshield.com. A deductible may apply. Save yourself money. Cam. Sign up and get your coverage now Cam. with carshield.com. Cam. Now back to the Cam. interview. Hey, listen, how far back do you go with Joe Quinville? I'm always curious. You know, he's the first head coach that I, I covered. Go back a, yeah. I go back a long, long way. Uh, Joel was my assistant, playing assistant coach, Cam. He was my playing assistant coach for the St. John's Maple Leafs in 1991. 92 and then uh, that year I always tell Joel I said I'm the only coach that ever made you an all-star he was second all-star team yeah. <laughs> he had a great year and we went to game seven of the Calder Cup of finals and lost to Barry Melrose and that was the team what was they, have? Primo, Artie LaPointe. they had a real good group of players so did we in uh, in uh, Toronto we had Felix Potvin and uh, uh, Rob Pearson Mike Eastwood uh, Mike Eastwood Yannick Perot. So we had, uh, we had a lot of good young players, and a lot of guys ended up uh, uh, in the NHL that were in that final. Yeah, no, I remember. And then you brought him with you. And this is Andy, by the way. I, I got a sore throat. Yeah, he you sounds know. like me because he sounds manlier, bro, <laughs> because he's got like a fucking summer cold, whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> well, I've probably been out on the water too much, probably. You know, all of a sudden my, my throat's all messed up. But I, I remember because obviously Joel came to St. Louis from Colorado, but you took him with you to Colorado. But even yep. when he's a player coach, like, I'm curious, like, do you, like, how do you know? Like, do you see a, a, a coaching potential and a coaching future in a guy like that? Like, what did you see in Joel Quimble at a very young age? You were young, too. Yeah. yeah, I was really young. And to tell you the truth, it was Cliff Fletcher that saw it. So Cliff told me when I got the job, he says, I'm going to do something. I'm going to give you a big favor. He says, I'm going to give you Joel Quinville as your playing assistant coach. He's still got a lot of game left in him. And it's really going to help you. And he said, it's really going to help you uh, as a coach. And it was great. I knew Joel a little bit because he played in Hartford. My brother, Bob uh, Crawford, who played with the Blues at one time, um, uh, played in Hartford. And, and uh, I remember talking to Joel at my brother's wedding. First wedding that was, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we want to um, hear about the next yeah, one too. A little bit, but we hit it off just perfectly. Our wives uh, hit it off great. Uh, we both had little boys named Dylan, so my Dylan was Big D, and uh, uh, Joel's Dylan was Little D. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that was, that's so, a bad. That's a bad nickname, by the way. Yeah. What little D? Big little D. Little D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Cam knows all about being oh, called I, Little D. Oh, now. I'm Little D. Oh, can I be Big D? <laughs> oh, go ahead. Come yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, so it, you, it was really a great relationship, though, with with Joel. Like uh, he was the absolute best uh, assistant I ever had, and and truthfully, when we we allowed him to go uh, to coach. Uh, the Blues uh, just after Christmas in uh, 1997 or ni- early 1998. Um, that was tough. It, it was uh, it, it was a tough call uh, for us because you know I I really needed Joel. He's such a good uh, he, and you guys know this. He was so good at watching the game when the game was going on. He had photographic memory um, and he just absolutely has great vision on the bench and you know, vision is important for a player but it's also important for a coach and I, I don't think there's anybody that's better than, than Joel in that aspect of coaching speaking of vision and being a coach you put you you coach one of the most entertaining games probably the most entertaining game ever in hockey I mean if you look up the poll they did a poll the other day about the Detroit Colorado brawl what was the lead up to this? And I, we had Claude Lemieux on. Claude, I should call him because I called him. Guys we called him Claude, yeah. but I called him Claude. It yeah. is what it is. And you knew what was going to happen. Like, 
How was that in, the anticipation for this whole thing? Like, were you talking to the guys before the before the game? Like, explain the whole uh, setup leading into that that crazy game. Well, we had played so well against uh, Red Wings that year. The year before, uh, we we won our first year in Colorado. We won the first game, which was the very first game uh, in Colorado. We beat the Red Wings 3-2, and then they waxed us every other game the rest of that year. So when we played them in the semifinals that year, we were uh, hugely respectful of them, and we knew we had to be at our absolute best to, be, to beat them. And, you know, the, the, the Claude uh, Draper hit, kind of was the capper at the at the end and that kind of was a little bit of the the prelude to the next season but really if you think about it Claude had beat them four straight with New Jersey the year before yep. and he was the consummate trophy winner so I think that they'd had enough of Claude <laughs> two years in a row um and uh and we got to that that uh fourth game it was the last game we were playing against uh the Red Wings that year and we'd won the previous three and we beat them actually pretty handily. And we got out, if I'm not mistaken, we were out to a five to one lead um, when the brawl erupted. And, uh, you know, it, it really was a galvanizing uh, happening for the Red Wings. Uh, so, you know, they were, they finally got uh, to Claude and, uh, and Patrick came out. Uh, Patrick got a little bit hurt in the, in the fight. Yeah, he did. Um, and that was a, a part of why we were never the same. But the biggest thing that I remember was, um, Cardi should have got thrown out of the game. And, uh, uh, and I complained and complained and complained, as I was apt to do in those days, that he should have been thrown out of the game because yeah. it was, absolutely was an instigator. 100%. You, you know, with, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, McCarthy. And, uh, and it was, uh, Dvorsky, who's, who's a good friend. And he was the referee. And I remember when he retired, I said to him, you know, I'd, I'd argued with him all the time. I said, you made those guys because you didn't throw them out. He ends up scoring the goal in overtime. It made them. It galvanized the Red Wings. The Red Wings now had uh, the toughness thing answered. And that was, you know, before us, that was always the question. With them. Mm-hmm. It wasn't whether they were good enough. It was whether they were tough enough. Yeah, yep. And, uh, you know, Shanahan and, and McCarty and, and all those guys, Maltby, everybody, the they point. all played a part in it. Yep. The point, they all played a, a big part in it. Uh, but uh, uh, so anyways, getting back to the story about Devo, uh, I, I, I sent Devo. And so I'd, I'd complained to him and complained to him that that should have been in. And every time I'd see him, I said, you should have thrown him out. You gave him the cup, blah, blah, blah. So I, I sent him a, a congratulations note when he retired. <laughs> and he sent me back he, uh, this note. He says, thanks, Crow. I really appreciate it. Always fun having you. He says, by the way, I should have thrown him out. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he admitted it nope. years later. But it, yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. it screws you over. But as far as hockey is concerned, that was oh. the most unbelievable game oh, yeah. ever in existence. I like mean, but, like, but being in the midst of it, like, Mark, <sighs> like when you're when these two teams are going at it. I mean, you look at how many you know Hall of Famers are, are in the game, too. Yeah. Like, future Hall of Famers. I mean, well, like, Larry, and, Larry and, off and oh, like yeah. But like when you're in the midst of it, like, are, do, what's it like though? Just being in the middle of it, like when all this is going on, like, do you have any control over it whatsoever as a head coach? Well, yeah, I think you do have a, a little bit of control, but really, it was as the playoffs are right now. It's really mano a mano, and and you you look back on it, you know, like I can remember watching something. Uh, a few years back, it really was Larry Anoff and Forsberg who yep. started the whole melee. So they're they're two very competitive guys. But you don't think of Igor Larry Anoff as a uh, as a guy that's going to uh, create havoc. Professor, well, but, you know, yeah, the professor the professor was into it, and, and they were into it, and and obviously our guys were. Very much, and uh, just as I think they galvanized us to be a great team uh, the year before, we were probably a big part of making them as great as they were. And you, you look at it; you're absolutely right. I mean, Scotty, Scotty's the best bench coach that's ever lived, and he was he was bang on in that series. He was so good, and you know, uh, you look at uh, the rest of the people; they had so much experience there, even without, um, even without, uh, you know, 
uh, some of the players that they traded. You know, they had Konstantinov, who was such a good oh, player. Lidstrom, Larry Murphy was so good mm, that year. Like, you know, give it to uh, Scotty and Barry Smith and uh, Dave Lewis. They did they did a heck of a job of getting the right people uh, to play. And they had a veteran group. I think, you know, they had Jamie McCowan and Bob Rouse. They had Mike Ramsey. There was no there was no young defenseman making that lineup. Uh, and I think that they rec- recognized that uh, their experience was going to pay dividends for them, as so, we've been talking about earlier with this year's playoffs. So when you're so when all this shit's going down, though, you got your hair flowing. You look you look like such a coach is unbelievable or a lawyer. You look you like look, a Aber- I don't know. Abercrombie and Fitch, I remember being like a kid model. and looking at you and be like, what? <laughs> like what? He looks like perfect. His hair is perfect. But when you're going through this whole thing and you see McCarty go, he spins off the cat and he starts doing it. Are you? Do you just sit back with everybody else on the bench and let the players kind of chirp and do? Are are you going in your mind going crazy? Like explain that experience. Well, I went I went crazy on uh, on that uh, game four where I'm you know where I'm in Detroit and and they've really gotten to us uh, by that time they jump into three one lead and I went crazy on the bench. That's not one of my prouder moments. If my kids want to get a rise out of me, they'll they'll pull it up on YouTube <laughs> and and show it. You know, yeah. but. Um, I remember that I was upset because uh, Shanahan was beating the crap out of a, a great young player that we had, uh, Rene Corbet, who was really a game kid, but he certainly wasn't in Brendan Shanahan's uh, league. Although, you know, I, I give him full marks for trying. And I was, uh, I was, I, I went crazy on Scotty because he had been, as Scotty often does, he got the better of me. And, uh, you know, I think he was so ready for those playoffs. I, uh, you know, some of the things that I remember are just little instances of uh, uh, when you're watching the other coach just to see how intense they are. Scotty was at his absolute best in that series and uh, certainly got the better of Mark Crawford. And, uh, you know, I take a little bit of responsibility for our team losing in in that uh, series because I probably um, could have uh, handled myself probably with a little bit more decorum. You're okay, uh, but, Mark. Yeah, but, but hey, you don't you don't have to apologize. Jesus Christ, we we love no. that. <laughs> you kidding? Yeah, you know what? It, 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 and it is fun. I, get it. I look back at that series. Those are some of the best best games. Uh, the two series that we had with them, and hey, they ended up playing the Avalanche. What five of seven years in yep. the conference finals? So. That's pretty amazing. And no wonder the rivalry was, was so fierce. Well, you helped oh, yeah. out hockey as no, a whole. I'll it, tell you that amazing. right now. Dude. Hey, listen, tell us the story, though. When did you first find out uh, that it was like a realistic possibility that Patrick Waugh was going to come to Colorado? Like, how did the trade go down? And were you just beside yourself? Like, did you know he was going to truly put you guys over the top, at least for that season? Oh, yeah. We we knew that he was going to be important. When we saw, like, I, I remember watching the Canadians game, the one where he was in for nine goals. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I remember talking to Pierre that night. Pierre said, you know, I'm going to I'm going to get on it because we had been working with Serge Savard earlier that year to try and get Patrick to come. And Serge was was recognizing that he probably needed to make make the move uh and that we could give them a lot of what they needed and probably they weren't going to win a cup uh uh you know with patrick they needed more people and we had the we had the young assets so it was already talked about and then when it happened uh where patrick goes behind the bench and and says to Ron Corey, i'm never playing here again you know and it, pierre being his agent we knew that uh obviously that something was up and the next day, he said, make sure you're in early. We came in early. We had all the coaches. Jacques Martin you know, was our assistant, and Joel was the assistant, and myself. And we had uh, Michel Goulet, who was the director of uh, player personnel, was in there. And everybody was like, oh, let's get him wherever, whatever, whatever we can do. Now, the, the, real, the real coup was getting keen. Yeah, you know, a lot of people didn't realize how important that was, but it was so important because Keen ended up coming. He ended up moving uh, two doors away from Patrick. They they really hadn't hung out uh, in Montreal uh, a lot together, but uh, they became really good friends in in uh, Colorado. And uh, Mike was really good at keeping Patrick grounded 
and uh, it was it was uh it was important it was a nice uh mix and uh, of course patrick boy oh boy he just changed the whole dynamic of our team like we knew we were good uh we knew we had a, a lot of talent but we just didn't know how to act myself included and patrick along with uh, Claude Lemieux and along with Mike Keane, they knew how to act. They knew how to be winners uh, because, you know, they'd grown up in Montreal and they'd grown up around the Robinsons and the Gainies and and those uh, types of people who uh, actually taught them the right way. Time to talk a little bit about Daredevil Hockey, the ultimate in performance plus protection. Daredevil is a lightweight compression-based layer designed with Kevlar cut-resistant fabric overlays that protects all the vulnerable areas of the upper and lower body from skate lacerations. Get yours now www.daredevilhockey.com Use that promo code CAM and strict. You'll save 25%. Now back to the interview. Let's go. So, okay, so you get... (laughs) <laughs> two monster personalities. And I hung out with Keener. I went up to his uh, Winnipeg fantasy camp. Great guy. But he's a big personality. And he had confidence. And he's, he's, a, he's a winner. So you get these two guys in the locker room. But you also have Sackick. And you got some big boys on there, too. Like, how did, when you first walked in the locker room or in the practice and you just saw, like, how they reacted with each other, like, at, at that point, it was like, yeah, they get it. So everybody else came on board. And Patrick's going to do his thing. Like, explain that because he's so big and loud. Like, sometimes that disrupts a locker room, but he did it the opposite way. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I think the guys, um, what really helped us was we were, a, we were still a relatively young team, certainly young behind the bench. Um, and, uh, and then you look at it, Joe was probably in what his fifth year, so he still didn't have yeah. everything. He'd been exposed to to um, uh, Peter Stashney, but a different ki- type of leader, uh, and uh, maybe Michelle Goulet a little bit. But now he was getting a huge personality to come in, and I think it helped that Clody had been there uh, for the, the you know the first uh, twenty five games of the season because guys were now used to uh, a dominant voice, and Patrick came in. I, he didn't really try to do too much in the room, but he was very, very forceful with the media. You know, like him coming in and saying, I'm here to win the Stanley Cup. You know, none of our guys even dared to mention the Stanley Cup. We didn't. And I think that was a big part of it for us is recognizing that you can say it if you can back it up. And uh, it was good. So I thought that they had a huge impact on uh, Joe, on Peter and on Adam Foote. And, uh, you know, uh, we had other really good players, too, that I thought were influenced uh, quite well. Like, you know, Kaminsky uh, was a total team guy, and he kind of led our Russian contingent uh, at the time. We had Gusarov, and Ozelinch was kind of a, a Latvian, but he hung around with those guys yeah. all the time. So it, the dynamics of the group was – uh, given a huge, huge boost. And I think it, it really said to us, like, hey, the, the club is saying we've got enough to win now. And uh, and uh, they were right. So uh, uh, it's uh, it's an important uh, get when you get someone with that kind of pedigree. And then you add Mike Keene along with it. It just was uh, uh, icing on the cake, so to speak. All right, listen, you mentioned Pierre uh, Lacroix. And, and you had a son, Eric. And, like, I've heard stories how, like, players would have team meetings and they would have to have Eric leave the room or whatever because they wouldn't want everything going back to the general manager. Like, was oh, that man. awkward? I mean, like, be honest with me. Like, what's that like having the son of your boss on your bench? Like, was that forced upon you? Like, did you want him on the team? Like, explain no, how that situation no. went down. We, we, we well, I've, you know, I have just was uh, watched Pierre's virtual – uh, funeral. They had a mutual yeah. celebration on the 6th of June. Yeah. Uh, and it was really nice, you know, like a lot of, uh, of ex set teammates and a lot of ex coaches all spoke. Uh, uh, of course, I'm in Canada and couldn't uh, go down uh, personally. But Eric, you know, I'd had Eric when I was in St. John. So that's really where I got to know Pierre, and that's where he got to know me. So, you know, you get your break for a lot of different reasons. And I got my my break because he had seen me coach his son. Um, uh-huh. And, you know, for Pierre, Pierre was all about family. And uh, he wanted the team to be like a family. He, he was always a guy that celebrated uh, 
um, you know, birthdays and uh, he wanted the wives involved and everything. And uh, he, he really did a good job of making the team a family environment. So from that standpoint, I thought it was really good uh, for our team. When we won, the one thing that Pierre uh, had, had shared with me is he says, I want to win another one, but I want to win one with my son. So he got the opportunity to get uh, his son in a trade with Los Angeles. And uh, we ended up trading Stefan Pissette to Los Angeles and got Eric. And Eric came in and he played really well. Like, you know, he was in a tough spot because of the situation. But I thought he handled it really well uh, the entire time that I was there. I never had an issue. I never had players come to me and say that that, that Eric uh, was a problem. I thought, as I said, Eric, I thought did a really good job, but you know, at the same time, it's a, it's a tough situation. And you know, when he left, he ended up going and playing another five or six years in the NHL. So uh, he was a good NHL player in his own right. It's just always tough when you're not. Uh, uh, when when you have anything being said you, uh, about you that's not uh, in the most professional. Yeah, your daddy's yeah. a GM. That's oh, yeah. No, that, that's, that, be honest that's a tough situation. Oh, hey, i got to ask you an unfair question, but you got to answer it, though, Mark. I mean, you've, okay. got, you've got Sackett, you've got <laughs> Forsberg. I mean, I mean, I, listen, one of those two guys have to be I was going to ask this right question, there, Andy. God damn right, it. I mean, best players you've ever coached. I mean, you've had Kane. You've had some great players in Vancouver, too. But... Like who, who who was the most important player to that team? Like Forsberg, Sackick, yeah. did they lead differently? Did they mean different things to the team? Like Forsberg. was it about them Ooh, being baby. collective? Like break down the importance and the significance of those two guys individually. Excuse his voice. I know. Uh you know what? They're all they're all really important. I would say Patrick was the most important because he, he could impact the game every game. And he did yeah. uh, most times. So, um, you know, as, as forward, it's harder to impact each and every game in such a positive way like the, like the goalie can. Uh, you know, I always say, geez, you know, my job was unbelievable. I always had that tough decision. Do I start Sackick? Do I start Forsberg? Sackick, Forsberg, Forsberg, Sack. Which one should I start? You know, so Doesn't it was matter. great having a one two <laughs> punch when really at the time they might have been one and two in the National Hockey League at the center position. They were that good. They were certainly in the conversation in the top five uh, in the league uh, through the time that I was there. And they were both, they were both so wonderful. Patrick, you know, he's a, he's a demanding personality. I, I got along with him terrific uh, because his his uh, his values and what he thought the game, how the game should be played was exactly how I thought it should be played, too. And coaches usually do think more from a defensive standpoint yeah. than an offensive standpoint. But, you know, uh, thankfully, I had those two other superstars who they were so low maintenance. Oh, my God. And, you know, I've had a lot more. Uh, superstars who you earned your money uh, coaching some of the superstars yeah. uh, in the game, but Joe and and Peter were were marvelous. They How were nice. Is that they though? were unbelievable. It was nice. I got to tell you, I was <laughs> why why I ever left. I don't know. My wife still she still to this day she says, "Oh, you you're chilling on a dock awesome. right now. You're okay. <laughs> you're, who are you kidding? Wait, did you leave on your own? Yeah, like, did you leave on your own, Colorado? Uh, well, you know what? Uh, at the end, we had a contract dispute. And uh, I just felt that it was time for me to leave. I was young. I was stupid. And I uh, uh, I decided that there were a couple of openings I thought I would have an opportunity at. And uh, that that was probably the right thing to do at the time. So, yes, I did leave on my mo- on my own, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't as positive a, 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 a departure as, as maybe I, I should have made it. Wow. And, and I take responsibility uh, for that because, you know, uh, I'm young and I'm a little bit, uh, I was young at the time and I was a little bit uh, too full of myself. And I think uh, with a little bit more wisdom, I would have recognized that the grass isn't greener on the other side of well, the street, well, especially when you're not living in Colorado. With no, Joseph that's Sack, exactly, Peter Forsberg. I'm that's saying exactly that you, you left your house in Aspen. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No, but it, did you guys, hey, did you ever, and you were young too, but like when Patrick would, did he say anything? Like, I know you mentioned that he didn't, wasn't very talkative in the locker room, but did you have anything with him? We are like, I got to calm him down a little bit. He's doing too no. much in the media. I got I to gotta, I gotta put my foot down. 
No, he was uh, he was great. Um, the one time that I, I, I upset him was I pulled him on a five on three. And this is when he was chasing the record for Terry Sawcheck. You got to oh, remember. Boy. And so I pulled him. And we score the goal. He doesn't get the win. Oh, he was so mad after the game. So I, I said, oh, I got to solve this really quick. So I just went to him. I said, Patrick, I'm sorry. I, I really didn't um, didn't really think about it. You know, I, I, I shouldn't have done it. Um, you know, I know you're chasing. I know it's important to you. And he just, it's a good thing I did it. Because he turned to me and he says, you need a timeout. I'll get you a car. It's a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always remembered that, but uh, you know he was good. Uh, you know, I I recognized very early that uh, he knew a lot more about goaltending than I knew, and uh, he was he was just uh, really good with me. I never, I can honestly say that was the only at the time ever that we had anything. And he was great to me uh, right from the start, uh, right to the end. I, I certainly admire him as a player, and I've talked to him a number of times uh, since, and I still admire him. I think he's a, he's a great hockey person. Is he trying to get back into coaching or what? In the yeah, NHL. I think he is. I think he is, and I think he, he will. Like, all the guys that are in the Quebec League, and I've got a lot of friends who coach in there. They say Patrick's uh, he's one of the hardest working coaches in the league. And you think the guy that has much knowledge as he has, and as much of uh, uh, of acumen as he as he has, would would not be quite as hardworking. But he is. He's embraced uh, uh, video. He's embraced preparation. He's embraced all the new teachings, and uh, uh, he works really hard. And I think he will get another opportunity. Um, uh, and I think he'll be really good uh, wherever he chooses to go next. Yeah, and I mean, then you see, you know, Joe Sack now a manager. I mean, it's got to be crazy, though. You coach these guys, and all of a sudden now, like, you know, they're in positions where they're managers, they're coaches, they own junior teams. It's Life goes yeah. by quickly, Mark. It sure does. You think if I was nicer to him, I probably would have uh, uh, no no worries about getting a job. But, you know, it's all, <laughs> it's all fun. They're all good guys. That's great. It's nice to, uh, to look back and say, um, you know, that we had such a great time. Uh, together and 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 that's what happens when you when you're fortunate enough to win in this game you just you know it's so hard it's it really is like yeah i can remember my brother my brother played um, he started with the blues he played with the uh uh with the rangers in 86 that was the year the canadians won the cup and they lost in seven games in uh, montreal and uh, that was in the uh in the semifinal series and I remember talking to him after the game. He says, "God, he says it's just so hard. I can't believe it's over." And 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 you you tell players that all the time, like you know, enjoy it while you're there because it isn't. Don't take anything for granted. It's so so hard to win that cup. That's why it's so much fun uh, when you do. I've won 25 years ago, uh, but I still uh, remember it like it was yesterday, and it's uh, it's a wonderful memory. Hey, listen, you're going to be known for a lot of things, but I mean, let's be honest. One story that's always going to pop up is going to be the Bertuzzi, Steve Moore incident. And we we had Todd come on with us. He was unbelievable. He answered the questions. He he was great. Um, you know, just having him kind of explain his side. Brad Mays come on. He had some interesting comments too. Uh, I'm just curious how you reflect on the whole incident. Just looking back, I don't know how often you think about it. But it's it's not a memory that I'm sure you're you think about too often that you're excited to talk about. But how do you look at it? How do you reflect on it? Well, I look at it as a, a certainly an unfortunate uh, incident. But uh, at the same time, you know, I look at it and say that uh, uh, you know it it is uh, what hockey ends up becoming. A lot of times, there are an awful lot of games that end up having. A, a skirmish or two or three or four. Um, it's not the worst incident I've ever seen by a long shot. Uh, it's not the worst one that's ever been in hockey history, but it had a very unfortunate outcome uh, for uh, for Steve Moore um, and for Todd Bertuzzi, uh, particularly because Todd um, Todd ended up getting suspended for the rest of the year and. And, and the following season as well, which ended up being a lockout. Uh, but, you know, that really hurt Todd. It hurt the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, we were a first-place club 
uh, at that time, and uh, it, it really was a, a, a tough happening. But um, you know, um, all you can do is you reflect on on those things that happen, and you hopefully are better the next time that you see something uh, like that that uh, that is occurring. And you know, the, the referees and the league they do such a good job of, of policing the games. Um, yeah, not that they didn't then. They did then too. They did a great job of it. And it was just an unfortunate happening, you know, a pile of that many people. And unfortunately, a, a player got injured because of it. Do you think you were portrayed uh, inaccurately? I mean, just in terms of how people looked at your involvement yeah. in the situation. Do you think that was fair? Or do you think the way uh, people. I don't know per- whether in, inaccurately is, is the right, uh, right word. Um, you know, like. I, I'm very, very comfortable with how I acted uh, during that. I, and I'm a competitive guy. I mean, I look back and I say, the only thing that, that I could have done was been less competitive. And that's never going to be something that is going to be part of my DNA. Uh, you know, I, I'm in a game because we try to win every game and you keep going until, uh, you can't go any longer. And, uh, so, that's the only thing that uh, that I can look back and change. I didn't send anybody out to get anybody. I didn't uh, um, make any uh, any types of threats. I mean, that's all been uh, sorted out. And at the, at the end of the day, uh, like I said, it's unfortunate what happened. Uh, but I'm not uh, at all discouraged by anything I did. And if there's anything I could change is maybe just say, okay, you know, don't be quite so competitive. Don't, uh, uh, you can always show competitiveness in a lot of different forms. And I think as you mature, you, you start to recognize that there are, are better ways to send messages at different times. Yeah, and people talk about that. It's like, I've never even had a coach, honestly, in my whole life ever tell me to go do anything. I don't need that. Like, everybody on that bench, is, they had their mind set. <laughs> no matter what you told them, to be honest with you, oh. in my opinion, their mind was set on what they were going to do. So this, I, I don't think the, some people don't understand that. And, you know, if you're in the game, you, you kind of get it sometimes. It is hard to explain um, the, the semantics of, of hockey and just how competitive uh, people are especially divisional opponents, you know, and Colorado yeah. was a divisional uh, opponent of ours. They'd won the, the, the league title nine years in a row. Uh, we were the team that was ahead of them. Uh, they had lost the night before uh, seven, one. So they got thrashed the night before. Uh, you know, and uh, we were, we were unfortunately uh, the team that, uh, that ended up being uh, uh, being. No, I don't want to say hurt the most, but because obviously Steve Moore not playing again, that's you can't justify that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but uh, you know, we also got badly, badly hurt the Vancouver Canucks because you know it ended up having an effect on our team to say the very least. Oh, hey, before God, we yeah. move on from that, though, like when when Steve Moore is down on the ice. And even that night, I mean, are you sitting around and you're like, oh, my God, we, we're in oh. deep shit. Like, this is very, Bigger very serious. You. Like, when did that sink in for you? Uh, it sunk in pretty much. You know, you're always, uh, you're always concerned when anybody is injured. Uh, so, you know, uh, you're, you're hopeful that nobody um, is injured so that they can't play no matter what game uh, you're playing, no matter what time of the, of the year. And, you know, then the concern comes over um, once all of the, uh, uh, the league starts to get involved. And in that incident, you know, we received calls from, I, mean, I remember going into my office after the game and talking, uh, getting a call from Colin Campbell, getting a call from uh, other league uh, uh, officials and that sort of thing. So, you know it's pretty serious then, and um, I can remember uh, one of my one of my distinct memories was going in and talking to Todd, and his, we brought his wife down uh, uh, to talk with him because he was just distraught. Uh, so you know it's uh, it was a very tough situation, and, and to answer your question again, it was pretty immediate mm. uh, yeah. from our standpoint. 
Cam and Strick podcast here for our boy Dan Bellman with Bellman.com. Yeah, baby. You need some new wheels? Mm. Why not get a Cadillac, a Buick, a GMC? Head out to Troy today. And again, don't forget about Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram right across the street. No doubt. Right there in Troy, Missouri. Mm -hmm. Visit them online. Check out their new selection, the pre-owned selection, the best service you will find anywhere in the country. Bellman.com. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Get yourself some new wheels in time for the summer. Yeah. Now back to the interview. Okay, so listen, you went over to uh, Coach in Switzerland, which is what I want to do. I want to oh live my in Switzerland. God. Oh, my God, Mark. I can't believe you came back. No shit. <clears throat> but listen, you got, you got uh, Austin Matthews to come over there. I mean, yeah. like, did you know him at all? Like, whose idea, yeah. who's idea, who's idea was that? It was Pat Brisson. And, uh, you know, I knew Pat quite well. Uh, Pat was, you know, obviously at that time one of the premier agents in the game. And we had talked to him about a number of his clients. Uh, and uh, he was the one that brought it up. He says, uh, what would you think if we could get you Austin Matthews? And it, where it started to become a possibility was the under-18s were in Switzerland uh. that year. So uh, I had four players that played for me uh, with the ZSC Lions uh, four underage kids who had all played uh, for us that were playing for the Swiss team. So I said, I'm going to be watching the games anyways. I'll watch Austin. I can remember I had seen Austin that uh, Christmas because the, the um, World Junior was in Toronto and I went to see a couple games. And uh, I remember I watched uh, the U.S. play somebody and I remember seeing Austin and uh, saying, oh boy, he's a real good player even then. So then when I saw him in uh, in the world under 18, you know, I told uh, uh, Pat right away, I said, Pat, he can play right now. Because I saw how the kids uh, were playing from our team in the tournament. We had uh, Dennis Mulligan, who's with the Leafs, uh, uh, Jonas Ziegenthaler. Um, we had a kid named Roger Carr. We had a kid named Dominic Diem. Um, and they're all, they were all really good players in that championship. So the Swiss finished fourth in that tournament. But Austin and his team, they had the, uh, Tchuk and they had uh, Roslovic and just a whole host of McAvoy was there. They had a whole host of, uh, of players that were just outstanding. And um, I remember telling Pat, I said, Pat, he'll be he'll be a great player right away. By the end of the year, he'll be the best player in the league. Mm. And I was wrong because he was the best player right away. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I can were. remember his first game. He came over and they wouldn't let him play until he turned 18. So he had, to, he had to watch and practice for this for the first four games because they start early there. And his birthday is September 17th. So he played the first game and it was against the champion from the year before the most. And he was outstanding in that game. It was, uh, it was, um, it was really a, a, a great year. You know, you get blessed to, to have super, super young players come in. And then luckily, I'd been around um, great young players before. So when you see it again, you're just going, oh, yeah. You forget how good the real superstars are. They're just so gifted, and uh, and Austin was one of those players for well, sure. What is he doing wrong in the playoffs? And what's that organization doing wrong in the playoffs, though, Mark? I mean, you've been in the game a long time. You're a Wiley veteran. Andy and I both have to go up on Toronto Sportsnet and give, like, hot takes on, like, Toronto Maple Leafs, and we kind of get shit on sometimes. But on the other yeah. hand, it's like I, we have to be negative at times throughout the playoffs. What are they doing wrong? What's he doing wrong? What's Mitch Marner doing wrong? You watch those games. You know what I think more than anything, and this is really simplistic, the answer, they just have to get through a round. Yeah. Mm, yep. Once they get through a round, I think that they will bust open the door. Okay. Uh, it's almost like they have um, – uh, a phobia of getting into, uh, you know, that fourth win, and uh, they they obviously tighten up big time. I mean, we've seen it now, three, four years in a row. Um, I don't think that it was that case that when they lost to Boston, where they had that tough meltdown at oh, the end yeah. of the game. But every other year, it's like you know they they just never came close to playing their best game. Uh, towards uh, when they could close it off. And, uh, you know, it reminds me of the Avalanche. You know, we played the Vancouver Canucks. And the Vancouver Canucks in Game 5 in Colorado, they should have beat us. They should have beat us. 
And I'm sure if Pat Quinn was alive, he'd probably say, you're damn right, we should have beat us, <laughs> and all that right. sort of thing. Yeah, uh, but we got uh, we got lucky. We scored on a five on three in the third period. Not very often you get a five on three in the third period, but we got one. We scored, and then Joe Sackick scored on Corey Hirsch and a shot from the corner, uh, and uh, we won that game. And that was the turning point for us because the next night uh, Patrick came in and and he played outstanding in Vancouver, and we won that first uh, series. So we got through it and. You know, the year before we'd lost to the Rangers. The year before they didn't make the playoffs. That's how I got the job. And the year before that, they lost to the Canadians who won the Cup. And they were heading that series too. So it was a good team for a number of years that just kept stubbing their toe. And I think that's what the Leafs are. They're a good team. They just got to find a way to get through it. And maybe they just need to be uh, saying a few more prayers before the game because sometimes it is that lucky bounce that yeah. uh, allows you to get through it, and that certainly was the case for us um, um, when we beat Vancouver. That, that you you got to create that luck, though, Mark. Sometimes. I know, I know. Like, you, yeah, know, you do, I you mean, do. But you know, they haven't played poorly, guys. They no, have. You're yeah, right. You, they've man. they've played they've played really well, and they've played hard. <laughs> Montreal played great. Carey uh, Carey Price was outstanding. Yes, yep. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't you know what, Mark? I mean, listen. And uh, I've never played in the NHL, but you sure about that? Yeah, Andy? I never, never you played. Talk about you, dude. <laughs> never played. But watching the Blues win it, <laughs> and all those years where they had better teams and they didn't win it, like, yeah. it's hard to win. Yeah, you know, Damn it's right. hard it to is. win. Damn so right. it is. You know, I, I I do recognize that. All right, how often do you get asked about not using Gretzky in the shootout? I like in, oh, in, God, in, in the Olympics go. in 1998. Like, how often does that come up? <laughs> And and <laughs> if you had to do it again, Mark, just so you didn't have to answer all the questions again, he's showing on his doc yeah, right now. Would you yeah, have written yeah. number ninety nine exactly. in there? We we, yeah. had, we had Gretzky on. Listen, man, I, yeah. I I I get it. He was at the end of his career. It wasn't like Gretzky who was scoring two hundred points with exactly. the Oilers at the time. I think exactly. people need to understand that. But uh, take us back to when you made that decision. Yeah, like, I, that's still a ballsy decision when number ninety nine is on your roster, yeah. right? Yeah. So are, we, are we going to talk about anything else about my, about my mistakes today? <laughs> we pumped your tires up quite a bit. It, there's a balance. Here. <laughs> uh, uh, getting back to your first question, uh, it was uh, unbelievable uh, those first few years after the 98 Olympics. I could not walk into any place. I'm not kidding you. I could be going to church with my mother. Oh, man. And, oh, no. you know, someone would come to me after, and I knew exactly what they have the look. And they're just like, oh, so good to see you, Mark. Oh, how's your mom? Hey, uh, one thing I always wanted to ask you, how come? Uh, you know, and then, then the question would come. And, and, boy, if I was ever eating in a restaurant or, or having a beer, which I'm apt to do now and then, <laughs> that question came all the time. And, uh, you know, it's funny. Sheldon Brookbank. I was the assistant coach does such a great job great guy. Uh, with us in, uh, in, in Chicago. He's a great young coach. Great guy. He laughs at me every time when someone comes up and asks me that question, because he's asked me about 15 times. and I won't tell him, oh, yeah. I won't give him anything, <laughs> but uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I, I give the same answer every time that anybody asks me, it's, Always. Hey, he would have loved to have shot. And if we'd have asked him, he would have done a great job. But we have just felt that the, the best decision for our group, and it was my decision, uh, was to have the guys that we chose uh, be the shooters. And uh, you know what? If I could change anything, I probably would, because as it is right now, I know my gravestone will say, here lies Mark Crawford, the <laughs> stupid bastard that didn't use Gretzky in the shootout. <laughs> hey, you know what you do, Mark? That's a Stanley Cup champion. You know, you know, you know what you do? Shit. You just blame Andy Murray. That's all you do. <laughs> oh, poor Andy. He was the assistant coach. Oh, oh, he's oh, yeah. putting the papers underneath the, the, uh, yeah, he's the, putting the oh, game yeah, plan the doors. Under, I, under I remember the door. I, I'm the one guy that hey, liked it, by the way. But you mentioned, okay, you mentioned the Blackhawks, though. Uh, but Patty Kane, like of all the people you've been around and been able to coach, I mean, superstar after superstar, one experience after another. I mean, you're going to look back on it, Mark, and you're going to say, wow, you know, I, I was fortunate to be around this guy every single day. Explain why you're going to feel that way, assuming you do. 
Oh, I do. I do. Patty is, uh, uh, I like Patty as much for his talent, but I love him as much for his personality. He has such a great personality. He is a devilish, uh, he's devilish like Mike Keen. He's got a, a sardonic wit, wit. I don't know if sardonic's the right word it's or sarcastic's word. the right word, but he is so clever. You see it on the ice uh, with his ability to protect the puck and cut back and, and find open people and trick goalies with the shot. I mean, he's just a, such a, a wonder to watch play, but he's equally as good when you're talking to him on the bench. I love kibitzing with Patrick uh, on the bench and, uh, you know, just if you can make him laugh every once in a while, I, I find that uh, uh, a real good thing, but he is a, he's a smart, smart guy. He has, and we talked about it with Joel uh, Quenville and, and his vision, how good he is as a vision with the coach, but Patrick has it too. Like he is one of those players that he knows exactly how he should play things if he's going to take an educated risk. If you really wanted him to be a superstar defensive player, Patrick could do it because he sees the game so well and positionally he's so good. But he knows that he's paid for offense and he knows that he's got a score if the Blackhawks are going to be good. And um, I just am so, so in awe of his talents and his, the, the ability that he has on those two uh, eighth of an inch blades that he skates on. He is amazing. Uh, his control of the puck and his control of the play at, at his size in, in a big man's game. Oh, he's so fun to watch. But let me, let me go to the other side of things. Who's the toughest guy you've ever coached? I mean, not just, I mean, I know Mike Keen and we love Keener, but I'm saying the scariest son of a bitch to where you're like, uh, he may be playing the minors. We might call him up. He's fucking crazy. But you know in the 90s where it's just hardcore, like, who is the bad, oh. bad boy, Marky? Oh, we had some we had some tough guys uh, uh, play for us. Uh, Chris Simon. Was, oh, God. Oh, yeah. Chris Simon was uh, as tough a guy as I've ever seen. And, and Chris, you know, I, uh, I really, really uh, respected the way – that he could play the game at such a high level. Like he could play with good players. Yep. He was an excellent, excellent player. And you saw later in his career, especially in Calgary, just how important he was to those teams that won uh, there. But uh, he was a, 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 a fantastic tough guy. I don't think we win the cup without him because he in the Chicago series had to square off couple times with Bob Probert and that was no no yeah, he easy threw left task. heat down the pipe on Proby though like yeah. he had that yeah. left oh my god he was, and he had that long hair too oh yeah he was yeah. the scariest yeah. looking yeah. Dude if, ever. if anybody out there knows where he's at oh, like, yeah, we we're trying to get Mark we're trying we're trying to get him on hey has coaching changed that much Mark like from when you came in to now like you're working with a younger coach you know you're still doing your thing obviously behind a bench with the Blackhawks but how much has coaching truly changed uh, I don't think it's changed as much as people think. Uh, what has changed um, greatly is that players are now, I think, so much better students of the game. You know, and and that's not a, a knock on the the former players, but players now come into the game having had individual skills coaches, having had individual strength coaches, having had individual defensive coaches, offensive coaches. And they uh, are so, so comfortable with, with video learning and visual learning that I think that's the biggest part of the change in the game. Uh, before that, people had to learn uh, in the various leagues that they played in. And, you know, usually in any league, whether it was the Alberta Junior League or the Ontario Hockey League or the Quebec League or U.S. College, uh, older players always kind of dictated uh, play. Uh, I still think as Pat Quinn told me one time, that players learn best from veteran players. And uh, and I still see that today. But uh, the big change is now players are so used to getting messages visually. Players are so used to watching themselves and trying to make adjustments. And almost, uh, to use a goalie term, you, you've got to be your own best goalie coach. So I think players now are becoming their own best coaches uh, and uh, that's why it's uh, it's you've seen staffs increase because they just demand uh, so much information and they can handle and absorb so much information. What about how you motivate guys? 
mark. I yeah. mean, listen, yeah, yeah. everyone knows you you stepped away with the Blackhawks, and you know some players came out. They had some comments. Listen, we had Patrick O'Sullivan on the show. Yeah, We've we had did. Sean Avery. Although Avery did say you're the second best coach he's ever had. I, we've had a lot so of people. I, 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 I don't think about you. I, I don't you think his, you, his, his. I don't think his comments were meant to like you know crush you by any means. Um, at least personally, but like Brent Selma yeah. made some comments. Listen. When you when you stepped aside, how much soul searching did you have to do? How much have you changed? And and how do you look back on some of the tactics that you that you used to do, and, and some of the comments that some of these guys have made about you? Well, uh, again, like you know, it, it, I, I'm human, and uh, some of the hum- comments really hurt. Mm. Uh, but you know, I had reflected on how I was really after I left Los Angeles. Uh, uh, of all the jobs that I had, the one that I was not very proud of was the job that I did uh, in Los Angeles because I thought you know I I was probably at that time still living in an age where uh, it was pre-lockout and the lockout uh, changed things because the salary cap came in when the salary cap came in um, you now could not get rid of your your problems Uh, where before uh, you could get rid of your problems because, you know, you could hide salary and you could hide uh, this. And oftentimes you could trade a uh, problem yeah. player away for someone else's problem right. player. And at least yep. at least it was different. And I was stuck too much in that era and hadn't recognized that I really had to do a good job of making the players that I had the best that they could possibly be. And so when I left Los Angeles, I really started to, to do a lot of soul searching. And I thought I really tried to change um, my tactics. And I thought, you know, like uh, in Dallas, I did that. I thought I did a real good job of that, or at least a better job of that. When I went to Europe, obviously, that changed me for the better uh, as well, because you go to Europe and smaller staffs, I got back to the roots of coaching. And, uh, you know, I had to do a lot more stuff for myself. And there's a lot of extra practice time and development time and that sort of thing over there. So that really helped me too. I I became much more um, diversified, a little bit better balanced. And I did a lot of work, um, uh, you know, with uh, uh, some psychologists and some people that I had talked to to about how I was as a person and why I was uh, the way uh, that I was. And as it turns out, that was really helpful. So, you know, uh, it's not a surprise uh, that there are certain players that, that didn't like me. Um, at the time I was a very demanding guy, but I, I will say this. I don't think I ever tried to do anything to anybody that was trying to, to make them feel bad. Unfortunately, I've learned a lot more about triggers. I've learned a lot more, uh, about the proper way to, uh, uh, to speak to people, to ask the right questions, to be more, um, attentive for, uh, possible problems and that sort of thing. And I think the players have become a lot more comfortable at speaking their mind too. Uh, you know, uh, whether that's a, a good thing or a bad thing, I think players have, uh, have done a real good job of, of, of taking a little bit more um, control of their own uh, careers and their own lives. So consequently, one of the byproducts of that is you're going to have a lot more uh, discussions. But I always felt that uh, that was something that I, I did. Um, and I always felt that at the time, you're always going to have some players that didn't like you and some players that, that did like you. And then you were, your job as a coach was to make sure that you uh, had uh, more of the people listening to you and, and trying to do the things that you wanted to do as, as a team than players that were basically just shutting you off. So um, I feel pretty strongly about how I did in, in my career uh, that way. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we all learn. And I'm still learning today, and I'll continue uh, just to, 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 to learn. I've got you know, my daughter now is a is a sports psychologist. She's ooh, over ooh. doing her doctorate in uh, Bath, England. So she's worked with a lot of teams, and she has been so wonderful for me uh, because you know she uh, uh, she'll oftentimes bounce things off me, or I'll bounce things off her. And I'll tell you what, she was a godsend uh, when I did have those problems last year because we talked it out her and i a lot and um you know it it made a lot of sense of what was happening and again i try to to make amends for any of the wrongs that uh that i've uh, i've done and i've reached out to to everybody some guys have been real good and really gracious 
and other guys don't want to talk to me, but that's, mm, that's, all good. that's, that's their, that's their prerogative. And, uh, you know, all I can do is just, uh, continue to say, uh, that, uh, it's an open door for me and I want everybody to feel good yeah, about Mark, themselves. Dave, and, Mark, 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 we talked to, we do our research on you, man. And, and we talk to guys, they, they, they love you, dude. Like, honestly, <laughs> yeah. they, they love, uh, just, just so you, no, 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 just so you know. Okay. Like we yeah. all fucked up, man. We, I, Andy said stupid shit the other day and I almost smacked, smacked him. I was like, no, but. <laughs> The, the, we all do, and you have to kind of like groove with the guys and what's we we get it, man. But we well, talk you know, to well, a lot listen, of guys. They I mean, love it's, you. It's, it's happened with a couple other coaches, as we yeah, know. Like this was like kind of a storyline that was going on. But so was that hard though, Mark, Mark? When you stepped aside though with the Blackhawks, was that like a low point? Like were guys reaching out to you, former players, coaches? Like who helped you get? through that like how difficult was that and what did you think your coaching career was over like did you think that the blackhawks were going to give you another opportunity to come back i gotta tell you this first of all the blackhawks were outstanding with me right from the top uh stan bowman um president at the time uh, john mcdonough was terrific with me al mckisaac um everybody in the organization stood by me the players were unbelievable in chicago you know because they were first of all half of them couldn't believe it because you know, I, I have changed uh, an awful lot from when i was the fiery uh, coach that you see in the um, in the detroit redmond colorado yeah, i like that guy uh, though. videos <laughs> but uh, uh, but you know they were terrific a guy like robert robin leonard was just uh, outstanding um you know i, I i'm forever thankful that uh, those guys had my back uh, because I've been around long enough to know that coaches don't always get the backing of players the way that I got the backing of it. And, you know, right from players that played uh, for me in Vancouver to people in L.A. to people in Dallas. I mean, I had so many people reach out to me. That was just terrific. And I can remember saying that, you know, this is great that everybody's reaching out to me. I hope that people are reaching out to the guys that had it, uh, had been doing the complaining. And I hope that they're reaching out to them because everybody needs support. You know, and and yeah, there's man. no doubt that, uh, you know, I've learned a lot more about what triggers uh, people. And, um, and, and you know, I'm, I'm much more conscious. There's a balance with that, that though, now. Mark, though. Yeah, there's a sure balance, there okay? Like, it, it, like you've got to yell at guys, too, though. I mean, like. There's a balance. So, like, some kids yeah. are, you know, so it's not. Hey, well, okay, listen. I'm, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I got to say it, Andy. And, and we're going we're to let you is. go. You've been great. We appreciate that. Sorry, Mark. But I asked you how much coaching has changed. I mean, have the players changed that much? How, how much have these kids changed? Uh, I don't think they've changed a great deal. I mean, I still see the, you know, the camaraderie that players have. Like, I always go back to the, the fact that, you know, you can fool uh, the media. You can fool the fans. You can fool the management. You can fool the coaches. You can fool the reporters. Yeah. But you can't fool your teammates. Yeah. And that 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 value of being able to be in a dressing room and, and, and having guys know whether or not you're a real character or whether or not you're full of crap, uh, that, is, that is still there and it's still there in spades. Absolutely. And, you know, you're seeing the teams that are good, same as in, in, in my day as a player, the same as in, in, in the years when we had successful teams and won the Cup with Colorado. It's the team that comes together the best that wins, and it's still the case. And you're seeing those four teams now. They've all Always. come together real well, that's for sure. Hey, Always. I'll ask you, this, only because Avery came out and said you yeah. were a second favorite. we got to let him go, dude. Yeah. He's but showing on a dock. Did, He's got a bunch of beautiful he, women did, by him. Did he Stop really – Hit you with a puck in practice, I, and it, it opened you up for six. We'll stitches. smack him if he did. Is that true? <laughs> no, it's not true. Um, I'll tell you what happened. Um, the puck came off of uh, the uh, the netting behind the uh, uh, the the the, uh, the glass, and I just passing by, and it hit me on the top of the head. And because I'm such a fair skinned guy, I guess it <laughs> cut me. Now all the guys were just ribbing him. They were ribbing him relentlessly. They were going, "Oh, you killed him! Oh my God, doing this." <laughs> Sean and I never had a problem. I talked to Sean a couple of times. We we and you know his recollection of it was uh, was his recollection. But funny thing, when I'm with the Ottawa Senators, I pass by the net. At the end of uh, a pregame skit against the San Jose Shark, the same thing happened. 
puck came off of the thing, hit me on top of the head, cut me open for uh, for stitches again. Oh so I just, God. Did it fuck I just got to stay away from the back of the neck. Did it fuck your hair up? Because I'm worried about that. Well, the hair's the hair's gray now, so it shows a little bit more of a little bit more of the roundness of my. Of my head when I had the black hair, you know, it was, oh, uh, a little hey, bit harder. Slick to back. Hey, you hey, look so la- slick back in the day. I'm not gonna lie to you. Last dude. question. So at this stage of your career, Mark, do you are you are you hopeful that you'll land another head coaching job? Are you content with being an assistant and like mentoring some of these younger coaches? Like, how do you look at your your coaching career Still now moving doc. forward? I really like working with Jeremy. I, I really do. I think Jeremy's a great young coach, uh, and uh, I love the role that I have with the Blackhawks right now. So, you know, I uh, I took an extension this year uh, with them, and I didn't look for any of the jobs that were were open. Uh, and I think, you know, at the end of the day, I'll, I put it this way to uh, both the, the uh, my agent and to the people who look out for me, I said, if anybody really wants me, they're going to come after me. Mm, right. That's usually how you get a job. You know, this, uh, that's usually how you get a job in the national hockey league. That's, at least that's how I've got all of, all of mine. And, um, I just really am comfortable with where I am right now. I love working for the Blackhawks. My son's the assistant video coach, uh, for the Blackhawks. And, uh, he's the guy that's probably trying to work his way yeah. up the ladder. That's a story. Long for hours, day. long hours. Yeah. Oh my and, word. You know, Hey, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to say I've got this experience. I've worked a couple of years with my son, with a great, uh, original six franchise. And I get to keep doing it. I get to keep being around the players. They keep you young and, uh, I'm just enjoying it. I really am. You you should got some be. great dude, young dude, players. Enjoy too, yourself, so. man. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, some Chill guy, out on the St. Lawrence. Dude, he's with 15 women right now sitting on his dock. They're all <laughs> hanging out. They're probably wondering what the hell he's talking about. Dude, you live in a life, man. The, yeah. the guys love you, man. And we're glad we had you on. Seriously. Mark, thanks for well, doing this. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. This was fun. Yeah. This was fun. And uh, enjoy the rest of the offseason. And, and listen, you'll be back in the same division in the Central next year, so we'll we'll, we'll be seeing you, we'll when, be, you come, we'll, when you come into we'll town. We'll be in touch with you. When we're in Chicago. I'm coming yeah, down. We'll just, I want to hang on that dock. Tr- we're going to try and try and uh, have that Budweiser horn go off a few fewer times maybe with the Hawks. It went off a lot the <laughs> year before. The- oh, oh, yeah. Cal. We- we oh we've seen it. Trust me, Andy and I doing the the Blues games, but we understand that. So, Mark, you're the man, dude. Thank you. Go Mark. do your thing. Go enjoy okay. yourself. Bye now. Okay. See you, buddy. Bye bye. That was Mark Crawford with a C. I'm always interested, Cam, how like uh, people come up with names and like how do you decide what to name your kid? Which you know I've done three times. You name animals, I name people and animals actually. So uh, I've got a lot of experience with this. Um, Brody's real name is Broderick. I think he needs to go by Broderick. He needs to go what? by Broderick. That sounds no. like a, like, no, no, a no, no, like a no, no, no. like a sitcom movie star. Or something. Are you Broderick. thinking of Matthew Broderick? No, 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 Broderick. No, it's Brody. Broderick. No, you sound like you're in the forties or something. I, I, I like it. Brody's cool. Keep it Brody. Broderick. You're, you're not. It's just too sophisticated, in my opinion. Dude, uh, Brody uh, Jenner. Uh, uh, I told you that you didn't like understand it. His girlfriend or like fiance or something maybe it's his wife her name is caitlin so her name is caitlin jenner his dad you told me it's on my yeah yeah i know his dad is named caitlin jenner like could you believe like this guy (laughs) is so self-centered okay listen so he he turned into a woman for people who don't know bruce jenner former olympic star I mean, if you don't know that i don't know what's wrong with you but whatever she's running for, she's running for governor isn't she yeah, yeah she is yeah she is actually actually her actually to be honest Cam, with you, could you her imagine fucking, her, some of her shits i'm like man i get what you're saying yeah girl. i know she's like very republican isn't she kind of okay so and in a weird way know, yeah well i wish don't read into that I don't really talk about my political views and whatever. Like I, I don't, I'm, I don't. You don't even know who you are politically. You don't even know what the fuck you sway in the wind. So f- you'll walk to your <laughs> fucking nerdy neighbor's house and they're like, "This is what's going on," and you're like, "I like that, man." Maybe, like, this is, you sway in the fucking wind. Dude. Hey, hey, you, you, but get out of here. Could you imagine if your dad, Dennis, if he decided he okay, looks like a now- shit kicker? You, you see, my dad looks up. You see his fucking little answer, the post I posted for Father's yeah, Day. Yeah, I did. I did. The, yeah. My dad's the baddest motherfucker in the league. We had boats. I showed you. I looked up to my daddy. I, that's what we did on the boat. 
chilled. You see our big life. At least I had a life jacket. Damn, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a hole in the boat. There was a hole in the boat. I saw dude, a little a, hole. Dude, that was an 88 fucking nitro bass boat with a 250 Black Max on the back of it. I flew out of that goddamn thing and he saved me one time. It looked cheap. It looked like a cheap boat. That was a, you don't know. Was very don't, cheap. Don't, don't, don't even. Don't even. Like, and he didn't have a lot of money, but that he got a goddamn badass bass boat for us at the Lake of the Ozarks, yeah, man. Yeah, it get yeah, rocked. It, like a, it would get rocked yeah. big mm. time. Look like a bluegill sea ray, bluegill boat. That's that's no bass boat, dude. That thing's fucking badass. I, I know, I know a bass boat. Anyway, so if Dennis changed his name to Kate, like after you're dating Kate, and all of a sudden, like he went by Kate Jansen, and like your wife is like, "What the fuck? Like that's my name. I'm Kate Jansen." So that's what happened here. So Brody Jenner, his he's got he's got this wife. Her name's Kaylin, and then his dad decides, you know, whatever. He changes. His, were they married before she did the thing? They were like in a long term relationship, and then the dad changes his name. Okay, I'm gonna go with Kaylin, yeah, the same name confusing. as my son's wife. Like what the dude? Uh, you can't do that, Andy. Do that. This is what you do all day. You sit around and you watch fucking e television or fuck whatever. You know, like, I just don't give a fuck. Now, she's running for governor, and she's like, no, we got to clean up the homeless problem in our, in our in our fucking state. And, like, this, that, and the other. And, like, you know, maybe, like, secure the border a little bit just so it's not an influx of crazy mm. nonstop. And maybe just regulate it a little bit, a little bit. Like, if she's saying that kind of shit, I don't give a fuck what she did. It's better than what they got going over there now. They, they want to stay. People are moving out of that state so goddamn fast. Your head will spin. Hey, what's your real name, Cameron? Cameron Wesley Jansen. I used to say that to women back in the day because I sounded more sophisticated, but I wasn't. I was a Hoosier from House Springs. It sounds. And I would go to very... women when I was young and of older women and call and, and they'd be like, "What's your name?" I'm, like, I'm Cameron, and and they're like, "Oh, okay. You 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 know you work out." And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that's what I would say because I think they thought it was sexier. But then when you get you get your name kind of going, then you just stick with Cam again. Cam, you know? it sounds very Cameron Wesley Sick Jansen. Talk. You know my. You know my sounds dad name. Very, hold on, hold on. It sounds very weak. It sounds very like, like 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 a weak man. You sound like a weak. You're so fucking dumb. You sound like a weak. You're, re you're man. reaching. It's what you reach farther. Like. Reach farther for a fucking chirp, dude. You can't. Get, there's so much to chirp me about, but you, dude, the, the dumbest. The, the, you say my name. That's a badass you, hockey name. You dude. sound like I a weak man. It. I will say this. I'm not gonna lie to you. When I was young, I didn't like my name because it's kind of a girl's name and stuff. But once you start fucking rocking cats and you get you can then you make a name for yourself and then whatever you, your name is it's cool you know because you you got you fucking created that for yourself you know hey the best is uh somebody that's you posted like, sometime uh, uh, what well, it sounds very weak it sounds very soft actually uh, like, i would not be scared Cam like, jansen oh, sounds soft. i gotta fight i gotta fight cameron wesley jansen wesley's like, a badass fuck name bring too. it on dude. that was my bring grandpa pete who was a shit kicker man like, he was let's, a fucking let's star go. rugby yeah, bring it on. You're tripping the wrong. You're going down the wrong rabbit hole here. You're hey. barking up the wrong tree. You're whatever that another analogy is. Stop it. Somebody Stop posted. It. Somebody posted yesterday. The newspaper article, like right before the draft, when Cam was drafted, Cameron, like very soft. To the old, very uh, to the old okay. women. <laughs> and the quote from the scout was amazing. Oh no! How Why about Lindsey they... Middlebrook? No, no, no. How about oh, so? Okay. I've known Lindsay forever too, man. Okay, I gotta chirp him. Yeah. So Lindsay Middlebrook. Say? So this is back in 2002. There, we all got all these St. Louis kids got drafted. Like five of us: me, Jason Constantine, Mike McKenna. Uh, who else? There's oh, Yanni, one. Yanni Stasny, um, yeah. and uh, Paradowski. What's his name? Paradowski. Fuck. Like one of the only it, guys out of St. Louis. I I don't know, man. Okay. So him. anyway, so they did a big article on us and they show us and stuff like that. And they kind of went through the article and like had a clip off of, you know, of uh, like a little, just like a little segment about everybody and, and, and what scouts thought, anonymous scouts. But yeah. Lindsey Middlebrook was a coach for AAA, played, played in the show. Goalie, goalie. Great guy. He'd yeah. call me up from 84 AAA to 83, playing big tournaments against bigger guys and stuff. Mm -hmm. He helped me out. But he kind of chirped me in this. And I he, he, he want to But he was right. Soft, He's like Cam to the roster, Cam, softness. He goes he goes, Cam could skate in a straight line well. Mm -hmm. And then something like that. And he's a crazy, whatever it is. And then he goes, but he's Tasmanian certainly, devil. I called you a Tasmanian he, devil. But he goes on in the paper, but he's certainly not tough enough 
to be a heavyweight in the NHL because he's only five foot eleven Ooh, or big it. enough to be a, if I, I love it. He did and say I remember that. that coming out and my dad being like, is he I was crushing guys in juniors already for and then I'm like, maybe he's right though, because he's he could have been right. Like five eleven to be a heavy, it's hard to do. Yeah. yeah. But uh but he was he was wrong on that one. The straight yeah. line thing, maybe he's right yeah. on, but he I said I, and and I remember my dad being like, You see this? I just remember that. I'm like, Yeah, I got it. Really? So it was a very strange written report on you. It was because very first off, it had that, which is just great. I don't think he's big enough to be a heavy, which is just awesome. And you Horrible. weren't you weren't on the central scouting list, dude. Like, no. How many guys go in the third round that are not on the are you are you on the fourth round? Fourth. Well, that could have gone second round because the draft was so fucking weak. Didn't yeah. There? Fourth round. Yep, and you weren't on central scouting, so that's not very common. But I interviewed right? with ten teams. They, yeah, yeah, you're very soft, weird. very soft. And yeah. uh, Cameron Wesley, very, very soft. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 but the scout, they had these quotes from these scouts. I like, got it. I'll read it. Yeah, yeah. it's so, so funny. So like with Jan, you know, they would say whatever, great bloodlines, whatever, very skilled. Yeah, yeah. they questioned his like skating and stuff like that. I, I would hate that if I was at that age and like you got these people anonymously like. Question I know. Like, like, shouldn't this be like a positive written? Like, uh, so one of the scouts says, "Never seen him play," <laughs> <laughs> and they put it in there. Well, think they about it, it Andy. I came from nowhere. Nobody came from nowhere, though. Dude, like, there's no one watching the anybody what anywhere. Do you mean? Oh yeah, what but mean? that was the only. That was the one year I was in the spotlight. Was the OHL? I he led the league he in penalty be- minutes in the OHL. Dude. How could he, he not have seen he, you? He didn't see a game in the O. He's probably scouting out in fucking somewhere else, you dummy. Then don't he's quote him scout- in the fucking – don't quote That's him in the what story. I admit, then fine. Am but I going to ask a scout to give me a Andy, report on a player he's never seen? No shit. But if you're from Toronto, he's going to see you no matter what. If you're in the fucking that area, but if you're from St. Louis, he probably didn't see you. He just hears about some shit. Okay. But, oh, it's fucking hilarious. My so, point How is- dumb – my What's point it? is, like, why the, f- why are you putting that in the story? Like, you're asking him to break down players. Okay, so if the guy can, like, let me give you an example. Like, if I'm writing the story yeah. and the guy tells me over I the got phone, it right here. if the guy tells me over the phone, I've never seen him play, but I hear good things. Like, it's not making the story. You know what oh, I mean? Like, I, I'm just not using. I'm not using it. I don't want. I've heard good things. I don't want to quote him. the scout who's didn't never see him seen play the myself. player. <laughs> Here's Lindsay Miller. Here's Lindsay Miller. I, I, sorry, Lindsay. I got, he's hungry. He's a truck. He skates in straight lines very well. He creates room for himself because nobody wants to tick him off. He's only 5'11", so he's not big enough to be an NHL heavyweight. That hurt bad. Oh my but God. his skills are not bad, which he's kind of wrong on that because they are bad. And he yeah. works hard as anyone. So, so thank you. Lindsay, my Lindsay, dad, I love you, but that is a terrible – that I love Lindsay. He's got unbelievable sideburns, great yeah. haircut. Yeah. He's had like white hair since he was like a teenager. It's like oh, amazing my dad, hair. My dad was so I remember my dad just being so fucking pissed about that. And he and he knows Lindsay too. And he's oh, like, yeah. You don't think that he's tough enough to because everything's about tough when he, my dad had to call me and spend fucking so much money just to talk to me on the phone to to be like you're not tough to, to even fight McGratton or Jake or any of those guys when you're living with them, you're living you're just away from it. It's just, it was hard to get. You had to get going, like you know. Was and that was you, that was back when you had to like pay long distance too? Oh my god, dude! Was it a long distance phone call? Oh yeah, five one nine area code to <laughs> all the way in Canada. Like it wasn't like a cell phone now where you just call anyway. I racked right? their bill up so much. Thank God I signed right away. I racked my bill at family bill. After you, they, after you signed, were they like, Cam, can you pay the phone bill? I paid it so much for them. I hooked them up with whatever. <laughs> I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't, yeah. But then but I left them. Just but. here's my message to all the young journalists out there. If you're going to do a draft profile on a player, it's okay to ask a scout. And if the scout says, I don't know, I've never seen him play. Like that's perfectly fine, but like it doesn't make the story. Like you leave it out. You leave only that include out. quotes Trash. from the scout that has seen him play. <laughs> Dude, that is no, fuck it. Like oh. you, you lead, you lead in fighting majors and penalty minutes. And you're like, I could do this. Like your confidence is like, I you can 
fight whoever you want to okay. and what get kind away. Of scout is this? The guy that, he, he's in the OHL, like the best junior he, league he wins in the world. Yeah. And he leads the league in penalty minutes. And you've never like you don't even know who he is. Like, what are you talking about? Just, and then yeah. you and it, it makes the story. <laughs> well, you gotta hey, leave that out. Yeah, no, but it, that was pretty cool to see that though. Like the NHL draft blows through St. Louis. Oh yeah, I like, like that. The first time it happened, that was a cool. That was a cool yeah. setting, and it was cool for all those guys, man. Whatever happened, to Jason Constantine, dude, he didn't do shit. That's what I mean. There's a couple guys in there who I just don't know. You know very well. A couple of those guys moved away and stuff like that. I don't know. But um, Neil Komodowski was the highest. I yeah at the time yes that's right and he went he went to Ottawa you know the highest yeah. drafted player before all those kids went in the first round I think was Scotty Mayfield who's who's doing his thing right now he was drafted high second round pick before for the New York Islanders the five kids yeah before okay. those five kids he because Philip McRae was right I think maybe two spots after second Mayfield rounder. different drafts but both drafted high so Scotty almost went in the first round yeah and, and, and like, Bishop. Brandon Bullock didn't get drafted. Patty didn't get drafted. Bishop third round. Okay, third round. Yeah. yeah. Patty didn't get drafted. Patty got drafted sixth round. Okay, sixth round. Yeah. And then Bullock didn't. Bullock didn't. No, he didn't get drafted. Because he went to St. He went to St. Louis at the St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence, yeah. He could have played in the O, which he, he didn't even get his edge. I don't even think he fucking. I, no, he, 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 he's, he seems like a guy like, listen, if I'm advising Brandon Bowling back then, I'd be like, go I'm to like, the I'm like, dude, you're, 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 go you're going to the major, you're going to major junior. Oh my God. And you'd be a fucking superstar there. Yeah. And the women, yeah. oh God, the women on him, he's like the handsomest dude. He, they, he, he and he was shit pump guys that was left uppercuts. Yeah. Then he'd score yeah. a goal because he got an awesome shot. Uh, I, I should have been, I should have oh been advising God. him. Like St. Lawrence. No, dude, like you're going I should to be an advisor. Old. Andy. Yeah, no, I don't know. I'm look, I'll be honest with you, I'm not an advisor. I'm an advisor on how to like get going and motivated. But as far as like the dichotomy of the O compared to uh uh I don't know shit about anything anymore. It's so changed. I'm so out of the game. I don't even know about youth hockey. I just know I can walk in your locker room and I'll pump that goddamn team up, even if it's a bunch of girls playing against the same age boys and they'll shit fuck pump them. And they'll stand over their dead bodies and then wink at me when I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, God. And I'm like, looking at everybody like, I didn't mean to do that, but I did. Hey, before we get out of them. here, before we get out of here, what? give me like any lasting thoughts on uh, Crow. Great nickname, by the way, because he used to like, he was like a 747 going back and forth from the minor. He looked to like a NHL. lawyer. I remember watching him when I was a kid. He looked like a lawyer in a goddamn 90s movie. And his teams were fucking awesome. And so like the whole structure of that Colorado team with all the cool players and him as a lead charge. And like, they're mean, they're tough. They're yeah. fucking hot. He just, he's just a cool guy. Now kick, a couple he, guys he, don't he, like him. Carson. I don't know. He kicked like, no. you. It was what's his name? We had, Oh, him. it was uh Patrick uh, O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan. Yeah. So apparently he would kick you in the back. Like when he, I, I think a lot of coaches back then did it, but you know what? Sean Avery was a guy who made some comments. Mm. Mm-hmm to the New York yeah. media about this when all this was kind of coming out. Cause Brent Sopo, remember he made some comments and whatever. Mm-hmm. And Avery Everybody's was like, different. Yep. after all this pressure and heat was coming down on Crawford, he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not saying this to like get him fired. dude. he's the second best coach I ever had. I assume the best coach he ever had was Scotty Bowman. So he's not saying like, this is what he, I don't know, man. There's different ways to motivate coaches were crazy. Back in the day, if people Andy. only knew, I, Andy, I, 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 I'm I never, not a big can fan. I say something? Of, hold on, let me just say this real quick. I'm not a big fan of people bringing up things from back in the day. If it really wasn't you. something that big of a deal that really impacted your life, dude. Like, right. like he didn't like. This isn't like a the Chicago Blackhawks like video coach who's doing like creepy stuff. You know, like you, that guy should get called out, and he should never step foot in an ice rink yeah. ever again. What a fucking weirdo. This is a coach who's like pissed off because you took a penalty. He kicked you in the ass. I don't know, man. I, I would imagine. I bet you the most known coaches in the history, not only of hockey, but professional sports. Could you imagine these football coaches back in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, what they would have done, Cam? Andy, let me explain. Oh I, I'm, glad that you, I'm, I'm glad that you said that was an unbelievable point. Brody, you might have to clip that mug off. You're 1,000% right. But let me tell you this. My football coaches were 50,000 times harder than me to a point where yes. my dad 
almost had to jump in a couple times. I've never even Don Morehouse, what he would fucking rail me, but I was a fucking cocky fucking. That's why he didn't give me the C. I, you know, I ran the locker room. We, you know, we'd hang out in our room. He had to do that, and I knew that he did it, and I loved it because I'd be the only guy that had to go blah blah blah. He never touched. I never had a coach kick me. I've never had a coach even put me in a weird spot. Never had a, nothing. I mean, Andy in hockey, nothing, nothing. Football was different. They were fucking hardcore in Eureka. Awesome. But a couple of times they grab your fucking face mask when you're a freshman. Like, and my dad like, I know. what the I know. fuck is that? I know. And he'd like, Doo. and like, dad, he'd be like, I'm going to fucking talk to him. And my dad had to go talk to him. Like, don't you ever fuck my dad, my son plays fucking triple A hockey. He's never had a, he kick. Don't you fuck it? Because my dad's like, he'll fuck kick the shit out of you anyway. Because I at that coach, I probably would have. But he grabbed me and twisted my neck and ripped me like this. You know? Oh yeah. And my oh, yeah. dad lost it because he's watching this truck. He's just sitting there fucking, you know, has a cooler by him, just chilling, watching me play football. And he lost it. never one hockey coach, Andy, ever. Ever did any crazy shit like that? And I was okay, a psycho. But, but I, I, listen, let me be clear. I'm not suggesting a hockey coach should kick you in the no, ass. Oh, yeah. No way. Okay. But, I mean, I don't know. Does it have that type of impact on you that it needs to be brought up scars to bring you? a guy down, like scars you like 20 years later? Like, coaching and the mentality of coaching in hockey is no different than some of these other sports, man. It's just changed. Again, I'm not going to sit here and make an excuse that like what he did was right and all that type of stuff. But I, I don't. Does it really mean he was the exception? I'm sure other guys were doing the same thing, getting pissed off and stuff like that. Who knows? Oh yeah. What, who knows? Oh, it happened. Biggest names in the history of hockey coaching in the history of the NHL. Who knows some of the stories that we've never heard of? Like, could you imagine like some of those old school cats from? the Oilers or the Montreal Canadiens or whatever being like, Oh God, remember when so-and-so used to do this, whatever, come in, ran right, throw a trash can at me. Who knows what he did? You know, I, I will know. say this. I no, it happened, but I, let me clarify something. I, maybe there, I don't remember anything to a point where it locked in my head to where I'm mm-hmm. like that motherfucker. But if I'm sitting there and I'm busting my ass and like some Sean camp grabs him by a jersey, goes, get in the fucking game. You're not, and I'm chirping a guy, which I don't deserve because I'm like minus two and I couldn't. And he looks at me and goes, You're getting a game. I'm like, God, fuck, okay, okay. But if a coach ever came over and booted me in the back of my fucking right, in my lower back, like, yeah, me, oh, yeah, I'd be like, What the fuck? Now, a little like tough, like, Hey, get going, like a smack, like, get going. That's, yeah, but if he came over and said, like, Fucking kick me in the back, now, yeah, what is a kick? Define the kick. Is it a little boot like get your ass going? I don't mind that. Like, oh god, okay, I got you. I okay. But if he comes over and fucking boots you in the back, like boom, like what? But let me I say this. I bet weird. you I, I've got just as much of a problem with the mind games, dude, and the mental torture yeah, that some of these the other bitch. coach that's coaches the do on their players. Like we've heard some players who say, like, listen, I, I would go into a hole, I would become depressed. Yeah, because of stuff that like Babcock would do and whatever, like some of these other, you know what I'm saying? Like saying like, like call them that. horrible, terrible people, and people have done that about Crawford as well. I think he has accepted some responsibility. That's why he left and he had to go get help. He went and got some counseling, and and he would never do that stuff again. I'm not going to sit here and say that was acceptable back then. It's a little weird. It's crossing the line, but I, I don't know if that should ruin. A uh, a coach's legacy. There's different mind games, term, though. Like know? Lou would, I'm not gonna lie, Lou would play mind games on me too. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure. I'm I mean, sure. Andy, where he called me and you know what you did, you know what you did, and I'm like, uh, you know what? Which what is it? Is it the the two forty five year old women I took back to the hotel in the front lobby, so you have all your people there watching me walk in, or is it like me at the bar the other night? Like, I don't know what you want me to, but he would do that. And I'd be like, uh. but I would say to him, Andy, I'd be like, I got nothing, man. Like, I got nothing at home. Like, I, 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 this is everything to me. And he'd put me in, he'd give me another chance. And then I went out and did it. So if I didn't go out and do it, and I, he cut me, and then I'm like, fuck, he played mind games on me. He told me he's mm-hmm. me back. He said right. this. Then you're like, what the fuck? But I just did it. And it actually helped me. 
It was my, cause I Mitch, walked in with 45 year old women. Like, what am I doing? I'm 21 years old. Well, you can't do that shit. Cam, you hear the stories. Like we've had Tony Amani and some of these guys on some of these stories are like what Mike Keenan used to do and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, I think these players now they're like, this guy was a fucking idiot, whatever. Like, fuck him. I don't think they're like, Oh my God. Like, like they need to go to like any type Thompson of like court rehabilitation yeah, over it. Yeah. Like is Mitch Marner like 25 years from now? Like, because Babcock asked Tyler Bozak or a veteran player to, you know, he like to ask Mitch Marner where he ranks on the team in terms of like work ethic or rank all the veterans, whatever the Side fuck. Side for 80 is. million bucks. Like Side rank all the veterans of, of, who, of yeah. the hardest workers on the team, whatever. Hey, like 30 years real. from now, is he going to come out with like a special on TSN being like, I like, I don't know what to do. I'm <laughs> swimming in my money. I Okay. What I do is for fun is I take all my gold. Like uh, the Duck series back in the day. Remember the 1990s cartoon? And I swim with my gold. And sometimes it makes me better. Now, look, I don't mean to chirp mental illness or depression. No, because hell no. no. We're not doing that. No, we, we, Nate, people know we're not doing that. But if you're back like, oh, that messed me up. I don't want to talk about it now. After I just made $100 million and I'm okay, stable upstairs. My concussions are okay. My family's You're a Hall of Famer. You're a Hall of Famer. And I'm bitching about what the fuck he did. Fuck that. I, I, it's. It's just now if somebody sexually assaulted you. Oh, well, like, that's different. I mean, mother talk about hey, Tony Amani, dude. Like Keenan would talk about his family and stuff like that. I, I think there's there's, there's things real, you do that you problems. cross the line, yeah. man. You cross the line. Yeah. You don't kick a player. You don't put your hands you on kick. a player. You don't. Well, talk you can grab. A, you can grab a player. Yes, you can. On the but pitch. you don't. You don't physically assault them though. You don't smack their helmet or anything. I don't no. have any coaches smack my helmet ever. Oh my god, never, no. Andy. No. If you ever see? I mean. It didn't happen no more. I've never had a coach smack me upside the head. Like, never. My dad never hey, smacked me upside the head. Never. And knowing Sean Avery a little bit, like, and just seeing how he, I, I'm surprised he wouldn't turn around and, like, fucking punch him like, in the face. Two hand Mark Ross. I know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, fuck you. I know. He's crazy. Know. So, anyway. Uh, anyway. Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm glad hours. we got him on, man. Tell a story. And uh, yeah, hope you awesome. enjoyed Mark Crawford. We really appreciate him coming on. And we're glad that he's uh, still doing his thing in the NHL. With the young Blackhawks team, that's exciting, man. I like watching those Blackhawks play. Some of those young cats. Yeah, they're cool. You know, there's good offensive players. I mean, uh, they're not right. as cool as they were back in the day. but yeah. No, but they've got some good young players to bring at. And, I mean, they're uh, like middle, middle of my list of watching, like, fun. If they're on, I'm like, meh. I watch. There's some, I'm, forget, so I'm forgetting teams. the kid's name who was hurt last year. Who got Kirby hurt Doc. Yeah, Kirby Doc, man. He's cool as shit. What do they remind He's him cool. of? A Josh Anderson, a fucking uh, a uh, big co- uh, tuck. Like, is that is that the comparison with that cat? Um, almost like a younger uh, Rick Nash or something. I don't know. You know, not quite as tall as long, but like the way he gets around the ice, he's super skilled, man. Very confident. I like his attitude too. How he plays. So we gotta get out of here. I'm going golfing now, Cam. I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm still you sniffing, sound like sniffling, fuck, you dude. Sound like fuck, dude. I'm, 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 I'm not even 100%. You're on kids too much, dude. Like, you're touching all the kids. Kids are touching. They, they're oh. all, I mean, I, I love your kids, but you're, like, you're, you think I'm a jerk. Like, like you're the you're the bacteria filled dude in our in, 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 in this podcast thing, man. Like, if you're sitting next to me, you might be gross out that I'm chewing at times, but you're the one with bacteria. You're at schools and shit. I'm protected, man. I'm protected out here. I'm not touching anything. You're around fucking children and other kids' children. They're touching each other, and then you touch it. Then you're around by me, and I'm like, ah, I need a six foot distance from you from now on. Let's like let's put the COVID rules back into play for you at least. Okay, all right. No, I'm oh, serious. All right. I'll let you know how I'm golfing today. I'll take some videos too of your embarrassing golf shot. We'll save that for next time because yeah, okay. you're very unathletic the way you golf. Very unathletic. <laughs> it it okay. didn't look very athletic. You're right. <laughs> I don't know how. To, right, well, I have no rebuttal. All right, as always, this is brought to you by CarShield and CarShield.com. 800-857-2481. 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM. You're going to save 10%. Again, you never know when something's going to go down. Make sure you're protected. Save yourself thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Take your car to wherever you want to have it serviced and worked on. They hook you up with a rental car, man. You can structure your deal short-term, long-term, whatever you want. So, again, check it out. CarShield, CarShield.com. 800-857-2481. Daredevil hockey, make sure you're protected. Skate lacerations are no joke. Use that promo code CAM and STRICT. You're going to save 25%. That's all caps on the CAM and STRICT 
Again, daredevilhockey.com. A bunch of our listeners have uh, have signed that uh, up for that, and we appreciate everybody who has trusted us when we talk about Daredevil Hockey. So make sure you are protected and protect your kids. Don't be dumb. Let's go. Protect those kids. Bellman and Bellman.com, B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. You got the Cadillac, the Buick, the GMC on one side of the street. On the other side, it's the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Something for everybody. Best customer service you'll find anywhere. Again, Bellman.com. Great supporters of hockey like all of our sponsors are. They love the game. Happy to talk hockey with you when you go in there. And, again, they'll buy your used car right now. They've got an unbelievable selection. Want that motherfucking dually. Want that motherfucking dually. So check that out. Bellman.com. And, of course, all our new merchandise available now at camandstrick.com. Click on the tab that says shop and hook yourself up with some great goods for the summer and the fall. That isn't too far behind or ahead, I should say. That's not too far away. Not too far away. Two hours in. Yeah, it's a long episode. Away. Good. And right, we need I'm, to give the people the fucking heat, man. That's yes. what we did. Yeah. Take it. That's what we fucking did. chill. Go go for a like a long cruise, not with your a long run. your kids or get anything. On, get on your side by side. Get on your side by side. Fucking put your headphones in and jam out yeah. to us, dude. That's what I'm talking about. All right, I'm heading to the course, Cam. Uh, I'm not okay, going to ask Andy. you for any advice because you have none. No, I don't. Uh, hit any. me up, uh, uh, Brody. Mute, mute Cam for one second. Hit me up on Cameo. Uh, my cameos are available right now. I'll get them to you within six hours. Or maybe 12 hours, depending on what I'm doing. That's when you know you're a loser when you have to say that. Look, they give you three-day fucking limit, dude. And if they oh. want something ahead of time, yeah. then you get yeah. on it. But oh, yeah. a lot and, of people are just like, get it done yeah. by Father's Day or something. And follow me on Instagram, too. Follow me on Instagram as well, okay? Yeah, yeah so, you'll have um, a fun time. He'll, he'll cook <laughs> for you and stuff. I got a day old steak, man. It's, I can give it away yeah. to anybody. Who no, wait. No, I'll get it. A, I'll get it a couple days. I like it when it sits a little, a little longer in the fridge. Send me no, your address. I'll send you. I'll that. send you some steak butter too, man. So yeah, you know, we can yeah. hook oh, that up. Show me, yeah. Show me more right. steak stuff. That's Cam Jansen. I'm Andy Strickland. Also, for social everybody media, though, by the way, for sure. with the Cam and Strick podcast. Yeah, definitely follow us, man, for sure. Until next time, this has been episode number one thirty nine, baby.